bars or but no. Okay. Technology. We're live? Should, should uh, should we should just go to, to the laptop. We uh, yeah. have right. yeah, this beautiful setup here. It causes a lot of, a lot of glitches with our cameras. Possibly. And Guys, so we're live. We're live back again. Uh, some uh, problems that we had here in our studio, but apparently uh, we're being told that we're live again. Anyway, so uh, what we were just saying just, uh, just the last minute, one of the nice things about um, using uh, Webinar Jam is that being that it uses Google Hangouts uh, technology, all of your webinars are automatically recorded for you, and it automatically creates a replay page. So within 15 minutes from the time that your webinar is done, you can take your replay page, the link is given to you in advance, and you can set it uh, and send it out all to your subscribers immediately. So you don't have to take the massive file that takes hours to download from GoToWebinar, render it into a software like Adobe Premiere or ScreenFlow, upload it back up to YouTube just to send out a replay. Our technology has that ready for you 15 minutes after your, your webinar is done with a, a nice, clean webinar replay room for you. All that stuff automatically taken care of for you, things that GoToWebinar doesn't even, doesn't even provide. So we're going to be bringing on our, uh, our first guest here, surprise guest for you, unannounced. Uh, we were hoping that he could make it, and he knocked on the door just 15 minutes ago. The incredible... Frank Kern. I could do a John Travolta. I know. And, uh, we need some music. I'll let him sit here. And always exciting. Be a little always crowded incredible. Three, but Freze Kizze. Yeah, and, and you know what's cool? We are just talking about recordings, and ho hopefully you and Frank get into it. But we added it. We should have called it the Frank Kern feature. So we just added that we, this we week. Actually, so. We actually do. Yeah, we call it. Uh, we're we're uh, debating whether we call it uh, Ever Live or Ever Jam. Ever yeah, Jam. Yeah. <laughs> And he likes Ever Jam. I like Ever Live. I do too. All right. There you go. All right, guys. Big round of applause. You know, we could actually use the Google Hangout applause feature. To, uh, There's no to... birthday party for me here. No, no. We <laughs> got the terrible. streamers coming real soon. Okay, great. How you doing? Buddy? How's it going? Good, good. All right. Uh, Frank and I... I've never uh, been here before. I've yep. never been in the... This, I mean, I've walked around. Yeah, yeah. Never been, we in, came uh, over here never for... been in, uh, in front of the boss vision here. Look at this thing. Live jam session. How's the audio, uh, Sassy? We got a thumbs up. So, uh, yeah, yesterday we uh, we played some golf. No, we didn't. We worked very, very diligently. Very, very diligently. And um, it was exhausting. It was. Yeah. It, really <laughs> it was extremely. There's no leisure going on. Look, you know, I might have clients watching this. So I, it was. Uh, we discussed their campaigns. Yes, at length. that's correct. Yes. yes. I was very exhausted uh, yeah. looking for my balls in the woods. <laughs> well, you don't want to lose those, You Mike. never want to have to yeah. go looking for your balls. That's the woods. last thing you want to have happen. It, oh, it took us approximately 42 seconds. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new record. So you use webinars. You've been using them for a long, long I, I, time. I hopped up on webinars. Crazy about them. So what, do you, what do you use for the last Oh, I've always years. used GoToWebinar, and I tried Hangouts. This is so classic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's before you guys made Webinar Jam. I hold you responsible for this. Um, I try to do the Hangouts on my own. Mm -hmm. So I always use GoToWebinar. It works great. It's a wonderful service. I think they're fabulous people. They Never really met them, are. but I'm sure they're delightful. Um, and they, they, they've made us all a lot of money over the years. And, and because, because has, have, I was doing the math. It's six grand a year mm -hmm. I pay for the, for the GoToWebinar. You know? um, so I'm like, you know, because mine always, I have a, the good problem of always having too many people mm -hmm. on there. So they get kicked out. People are like, hey, I registered for this, and I couldn't get on, and you suck. And then you got to say things in your emails, like, make sure to register. We only have room for 1,000. Like, yeah, that's probably yeah. not true, but it's true. It really is yeah. true. I, I, I'm going to say it anyway with <laughs> Webinar Jam, just so I could actually be you deceptive. Have permission. We, give, we give Frank. Uh, you can cut off the, you can yeah. make it where mine are only 1,000. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you just go to Webinar, they're great. They're awesome. I tried Hangouts once before Webinar Jam, and I tried to do it on my own. So you think it's easy, you know, because it's Google and everything, and you're like, oh, it's dude, this will be easy. It was a disaster. So I get on there, and I'm like, all right, man, I made, like, I built the playback page and everything. I got all dorked out, stayed up late. Da -da -da -da, I made it all cool looking. Thing occurs, and when it comes time to switch back to see me to answer Q&A, I couldn't figure out how to get the camera back, back to me. To so I'm live. I'm like, all right, we're going to take some questions. Hang on. I'm pressing the button, and... I pressed the wrong series of buttons, and it showed my screen, but somehow sideways. So they couldn't <laughs> see me. I couldn't see them. I'm live trying to look cool, which is yeah. disastrous anyway. And then my screen is sideways. I'm like, okay, guys, go to this website and type in your questions in the chat box, and I'll just read them to you. Beauty thing is, Read sold a lot sideways. of stuff anyway. 
read them sideways, sold a lot of stuff, well, that's but was embarrassed and stupid looking. Because no matter what webinar software you use, when you can get an audience live, yep. and really the only better time to do that is at a live event, but the next best thing is a webinar in my opinion. Yeah, I, dude, I would prefer a webinar, really, because you don't have to travel. <laughs> you can do them naked, yeah. which is the way I do most of mine. Well, obviously, under, but underneath here. I just do completely, uh, just full on. <laughs> In the yeah, hot you won't be able to do that. Very with, hairy with webinar jam. Don't want to. We yeah. we really encourage you know the face cam. Listen, I don't tell you what to do with your services. <laughs> I don't appreciate you telling me how to run. I will never. In fact, you do it better than me. So <laughs> so I won't. So um, what do, what do you do when you're doing a webinar? What goes through your your thought? Dude, I'm from 100% hybrid. You know, remember, like, the, thank you for making that. But I nagged these guys forever. I was like, please, dudes, make it. We're gonna do hybrid. So, first of all, webinars are the greatest thing ever because a webinar is essentially a sales letter. It's a different media. That, that Frank Kern feature will come out for you guys live, hopefully tomorrow, but definitely by Monday. Basically, you see where it'll say polls, surveys, and pop-ins where you push your offers and there'll be another thing that just says ever live. And basically the way it works, you take your video mm -hmm. uh, and you load it up to the web, whether it's YouTube or S3. You just paste that URL, and then when you're live and you're doing your your presentation, they see your face, you say, all right, now we're going to jump into the PowerPoint, just hit that button, and that video starts Boom. playing. That's and it, great. And it give you a countdown timer, because you say how long is the video. Mm -hmm. It'll count it down, and then when you see 10, 9, 8, you just click, your face is back, and say, okay, you put let's your do pants back now. on, you get in front of the camera, you're ready The other go. feature is if you want to remove the live bumpers, you can set a webinar when you're creating it, mm -hmm. put that video in, say start at 3 p.m. With the, with the webinar. You don't even have to show up, and it'll just play the video for you if you have your Q&A built in, if you just feel like being on the golf course that day. Well, hypothetically speaking, I just may very well. That little method of webinars, to me, is the big deal. So I've never cared for the pre-recorded, like, pretend it's live thing. Yeah, you know? that's, the, like, the that's evergreen, uh, I don't, I don't the evergreen. I don't mind if they know it's not live, you know, but with the, with the fake chat and all that. But here that. it's actually live. Yeah, You're yeah. telling them, be here Thursday yeah. at 3 p.m. So and, you get the best of both worlds. With real people in a room asking real questions. And you show up, and you're, the benefit of that is twofold. Number one, if I've done a lot of live webinars. I used to only do them live. You know, so, and my webinars are long, like 90 minutes of content. And inevitably, you'd have to pee or something mm -hmm. in the damn webinar. Or you'd get tired. I don't know if it happens so to you. I keep the little, that's always little a great bottle idea. here. Yeah. Yeah, so you get the, the low blood sugar or something, or the, you know, the UPS guy. So like everything that could happen had always happened to me on the webinar. So the benefit of doing that, what we're talking about, the hybrid thing, is you're able to record your presentation, which needs to be excellent, so you can take as many takes as you want, you're not freaked out, you've got super high energy, and then when you go to the live Q&A, you're stoked, because you're not exhausted from doing this presentation, you've just delivered the very best presentation you could give, because you recorded it perfectly, then you show up for Q&A, you're ready to go, you're fresh, your viewers love it. The hybrid's awesome. the best. It's, it's my personal it, it, It's favorite. the best, I, I agree. And because it's a pre-recorded presentation, like you said, you, you're never sick, you never have a sore throat, you never forget to show the testimonials, you never forget to do the demo. Uh, all those things, when, when you can plan it out perfectly, mm -hmm. and like you said, you can be in the presentation, there's nothing misleading, you simply say, okay, right now, I'm gonna, um, we're going to show you the PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a presentation, but it's still happening live. Dude, you don't even, I mean, I've never had an issue like, all right, I'm going to play this thing for you now. <laughs> Enjoy. Like no one ever cares. As long as you tell them, hey, I'm gonna be here live at the end to answer any questions you got, it doesn't matter. Because think about it, like would you rather have you know, so you and I are big Dan Kennedy guys, right? So would you rather have Dan live at you know after being on the road for three weeks or whatever and exhausted, or would you rather have him take the time to record everything perfectly for you? you Perfect know, presentation. Absolutely, because they want they want the content, they want the knowledge there. So it, it really enables you to help them the best. Yeah. You're one of the pioneers actually. Uh, in doing these these uh, presentations, we can just you, stop you, and say pioneers and just let it hang. Yeah, you know? just pioneers. When you once did, I, who, who was it with that you actually hired somebody to like put a red box over your picture when you were talking? It was John and I. It was Reese's idea. So this is before webinars would were like mainstream. We didn't even know they happened. Yeah. So give give the background on that. So what the heck were we selling? This is before John had come out with Traffic Secrets and done all of that. We should try to get him over here. It would be amazing I if we text, could get him. I text um, He's going to pretend Howard not Hughes. to have seen it. Yes, I'll bet. And, uh, yeah, we should just talk about him. This is before the cross-dressing thing occurred. Yes, you know, so yeah. back before when he, he was, said, 
yeah. put the tattoo back there. And, and that, that was, I don't know why he would want to align himself with that type of political group, but he has. So, and what he does in his spare time is his business, and if he wants to be a woman, I support it. You know, we all love you, John, and whatever you want to do. All women. So, we're, <laughs> we're on, inevitably very popular right now with the Reese family. So, we were selling something, uh, I had this program called Info Millionaire, I think. It was like 2003 or four. And he's like, dude, let's do this interview. And um, we had recorded it on the phone, like... I think we used some Radio Shack thing where you stick the damn recorder. You remember that? It was a little <laughs> suction cup, and you'd like, like, okay. So he's grilling me. He's like, hey, does this work? And I'm like, I think it's pretty good or whatever. And we had a guy play the video back on a webinar, and there's a picture of me. When I'm talking, a little red square would show and say talking. And then when he was talking, a little red square would show and say him talking. It worked great. And you know what was so like? These these are the little things that like we read about in like predictably irrational and all these things that, for whatever reason, just that that thing that I, simulates that it's live or gives it that much oh something's happening when this person is talking just increased engagement for the entire call. I listened to the whole thing. I don't know necessarily that I would have with just a picture of you two and a little audio generator button. Uh, the, there. It was all Reese. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, another one of those predict predictably irrational things was. Um, I once did a, an upsell, just once. I did an upsell, and uh, <laughs> you saw that upsell. Did those work? I know. Yeah, I, I, I heard. I heard they might, you know, I'm might work. Try I tried it. it. No. So during this uh, during this uh, upsell, I decided to do a test, where at the end of the upsell it just ends, and there, then there would be another upsell, where I just stood there on camera for like seven minutes, just going. Take your time. It's it's okay. We'll be right here. You have plenty of time. You're just hanging out. Just, yeah. Like, and then like every 30 seconds. Oh, you're still here. That means you're reading. It's good. No problem. Just click that button anytime you're ready. That increased our conversions from four percent to six percent. No kidding. Simply because fifty percent bump. There's they. I don't know. The only thing I can deduce is that they felt that there was somebody watching them and they felt compelled to to oblige. You know, like it, as silly as that is, that there's a live person there. Like, well, I can't just close the page. He's he's standing there live. <laughs> it would be you know? rude. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, just, all right, know. all right. Let me just read it because he's not leaving. Yeah. You know, so this. Oh wow, there are some features and benefits here. I like that to I try mean. that just for the idiotic factor. Just yeah. to be speaking of that, you remember who's the guy? This guy's awesome. He created um, it was an instant teleseminar maybe. Uh, dude, this Rick super Rattis. cool. Guy. Remember he had that opt-in page. This is like 2004 or something. And it said like opt-in to get. Whatever, and it's just a video of him eating the mac and potatoes. Yes, yes, exactly. That's, <laughs> that I think that's where I got ever. the idea. He just he just kept He's eating. Just standing you know, there eating the and potatoes. And just... loud and obnoxious, like yeah. he had the microphone here, and it was just literally the most. All you had to do, you had to opt in so that you didn't have to hear that. Uh, I think that was it. Crunching potatoes. But I remember he did this whole thing on it. It worked great. None of us has ever copied that. We should. Two thousand, two thousand four. That go I was one year in the business in two thousand four. I'd been on since '99, but had struggled until 2001. Do you remember how it used to annoy you? What, what I, did? I was that guy that would go to your help desk and be like, "Hey, can I borrow your videos? And can I do?" That? And you'd be like, <laughs> "You'd be like, if you stop emailing me, you can just if I." I, I never I, said that. I was always <laughs> very like, "Of course." You, were, you also and, had some really nice. You can some have really a nice support, support people. Still do. Yeah. Yeah. Same, Gerald. Same Gerald's worked with me for 10 years. Yeah. Incredibly, incredibly nice mm -hmm. response emails back. I don't think that people like me. I think they buy stuff just so they can see what Gerald will send. Yeah, Frank, Frank knows the story. I um, knew nothing. I didn't know this industry, this community, nothing. Dude, existed. it didn't exist back then. No. So I, I, and you're just a brilliant copywriter. I can just tell you like how reading your sales letter and. <laughs> no matter what they say, let me tell you, everything you said there uh, came true for me. So what does that say, right? Results so, not typical. Uh, not typical. Well, your not results typical. Are I, was just, I was I was the one guy. That was the, he was the one guy. It was a miracle. Yeah. So um, I'm in the car business back then. I'm working uh, working crazy hours managing a Hyundai dealership. But it was worth it for the prestige. It was. Yeah. It certainly was. Mm -hmm. I come across that sales page. I buy the product. I go through, and what was fascinating to me were the Camtasia videos. Dude, that was a breakthrough, mm. the dang videos. I made those stupid things because I would handwrite, because I did my own support before Gerald. I mean, how do I upload a web page? I'd be like, well, oh, this is a... didn't occur to me to cut and paste. Mm. Yeah, I swear, yeah. I swear. Like, rewrote it every time. Yeah, yeah, literally, and I said, man, I'm going to see if I can just record a tutorial for them. And people went crazy. I'm like, this is great. And that started, for me, the whole video thing. I tell you, it was amazing because, number one, I felt connected to you. 
and it, I'm sure everybody's told you uh, a million times, you, you're approachable, you're down to earth, the sound of, of your voice there saying, so, oh man, I remember some weird, like, page Matic or some crazy domain host. Yeah, that, yeah, the guy's name was Jim, yeah, cool guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you blew up their business, like, oh, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. C4 plastic exploded yeah. just a little yeah. last time I little... ran back in your car, hit the button. Yeah, it was, you know. Yeah, you never got caught for the pyromania. Yeah. Kind of runs in the family. Yeah. So, so, um, so, Frank walks you through all these different things. So, I say, okay, well, I'm going to need a domain name. So, th this is the, the hysterical things that like are on your mind when you do some. So, I'm like, well, workfromhome.com. And then I think back at how stupid that was, but bam. Oh, somebody has that. I was all right. Um, let's work at home.com. No, nope. let's all work at home.com. That thing shows up. It's available. Next Eight dollars. You know. I buy it. You know, Frank's saying, uh, get this Ipswich software, whatever the FTP God, software. Maybe, yeah. And it then, was free, uh, I think. Yeah. yeah. I upload a file. I type it into the uh, and the, the DNS. All that. I'm doing it all. And I I remember the first time that I went to the web in my AOL browser and I typed it in. And I hit submit, and it was live. And you were just but, like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I was like so calling cool. everybody. Look at this! <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I'm on the internet. This is this is incredible. And um, sure enough, start start uh, following some of the stuff that you're uh, that you're recommending. And I remember the very very first sale uh, came in seven dollars, and I, I didn't know how in the world somebody found me on the internet. And that was uh, that was October of 2002. Hot diggity. That that uh, I got involved. I think you've made a couple more sales since then. Yeah, I've made thirty bucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> still results not typical. No, a dollar yeah. a dollar a year is, yeah. uh, was the goal. I made three times more than that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's so, well, you know the reason that worked, and that's the reason why Webinar Jam is so cool, and why webinars are so cool, is because there's three basically three levels of influence we got. We can talk about something and be like, hey man, Mike can fly across the room, and you know, and someone will say, well, he said it convincingly, maybe it's true. Okay, the hell with that, I believe it. So that's level one. Level two is what other people say about you, you know. So I could augment that by these dudes who go, no, dude, seriously, Mike can fly across the damn room. And then some percentage of people would say, okay, well, if these guys say it and that guy says it, it must be true. But if you can demonstrate the, the best, most condensed level of influence, if you can demonstrate what you can do, it's irrefutable and is the most powerful. And so when you use Webinar Jam or webinars or any one-to-many presentation where you have that ability, it's it eliminates in many cases the uh, the need for any virtuosic sales ability. Virtuosic is a word. It is now TM. I invented it back in my NASA days. And um, that's why I think it's so important that people use Webinar Jam, or if, if you don't want to use Webinar Jam because you hate America or whatever, then at least use this ability that we have through the internet to do one-to-many dem demonstrable type of sales. Got to be doing webinars. Whether, whether you're using Webinar Jam or not, yeah. you know, we say in our video, nothing nothing creates a higher visitor of value to a website than the registration for a webinar and then a good presentation. It's ridiculous. I did the uh, I did the unthinkable and reviewed mm -hmm. fiscal numbers for uh, 2013 and 50% of 20 a little less so like I would say like 47.2% or something of 2013's revenue came from one series of webinars uh, that I did six of them and they were that hybrid thing that I told you. So in, in reality I worked it took me a day and a half to make the webinar. You know, you got to sit there and think about it and agonize over it and all of that kind of stuff, obsess over it. It really took about three days of procrastination and about five hours of work, really. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to the golf course and think about this. And, you know, whatever. And then um, recorded the dang thing, which is about two hours because recording a PowerPoint is not that hard. You, you will screw up, but you just stop, you know, I mean, it's nothing. Yeah. Right? And then the actual labor was. 90 minutes of Q&A, maybe each time. I'll go forever on mm -hmm. Q&A. I like it. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. You know, it's, and it can never hurt. Time. It can never hurt. It always seems to help. It's, it's, dude, I've found, and I've actually measured this, mm -hmm. that I will have 50% more sales if I do a live Q&A versus if I just stop. And you're surprised, aren't you, at some of the questions that are asked. Some were in the presentation. Oh, yeah. They got there late. Some, they just need the reassurance. Uh, it's a, It's amazing. Uh, when we see the, the live Q and A, so many of the questions from the, the first Jam session we did here, it's like, wow, 50% of these are features that are on the web page. Yeah. You know, and uh, um, I think and people they like to connect. They like it shows that you're there for them. You know, it didn't end and they're yeah. left on their own. And yeah. if you can call them out, like to that person, you know, mm -hmm. say, yeah, dude. And the great closing thing, a little voice or a little uh, language pattern, I guess, for 
live Q and A is to say, well, so so let's say they're saying like, you know, can you do hybrid? You say, yeah. As a matter of fact, you can do hybrid. And the fact that you're asking that question, Jim, and anyone else like Jim that might have that question, goes to show that you're really serious about success with webinars. And that's why you should enroll right now in the webinar jam. And then, so what what a live Q and A allows you to do is to on the fly customize sales pitches. Mm -hmm. For individual callers, and you know, because it's all everyone's got. There's probably ten main Cause, questions. Because every question is overcoming an objection or another opportunity. Absolutely, to close. yeah, and another opportunity just to be cool and provide value, you know, and be a real person. So I like it. Yeah, I pretty I, good. I, I, I've been doing webinars uh, for a long time. Is uh, seeing 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 everything that's done with them. You can do, use them for training. You mm -hmm. know, and, uh, you can use them to create a course and then to fulfill the course with eight. You can use them to create sessions. books. Yeah. I shouldn't tell you this, you know. I shouldn't tell them this. How would the, that happen? The books that I've released, I released two in the past uh, quarter, since December 11th. I released two. Dude, I've done webinars, recorded the webinar, transcribed it, and then it's painstaking to edit it. So you don't just send out the transcript. You do a good job, you know. But that's you can do. I mean, just a webinar is more than just a webinar, you know. It's more than just a sales mechanism. It can be really valuable content, brand building, and it can be spun off into other assets for your business, which is really the key word there is assets. Mm -hmm. You know, every presentation is an asset that can, if you do it properly, can be used dependably you to can systematically the audio, create, create a podcast with it, yeah. create a book, sell the book. So tell us about your book. What do you got? Uh, well, it's got pictures. Mm -hmm. And the cover is yellow. Uh, are the uh, paint by numbers anything like that? The cover is yellow. It's uh, it's cost extra if you want the paint by numbers version. Oh. Yeah, there's an upside. Upside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> book's cool, man. It's called Convert. That's uh, this talks about the little formula. But I don't want to talk. I want to talk about webinar jams. No, just more exciting. How can they get your book if they want it? Good lord. They go to your Facebook page. They would have to click on one of the myriad of ads that yeah. they would see for yeah. the book. I mean, if the you, URL if, is like a mile long. You know? If you see Frank on uh, on the side, click get his book. Is it free? It's, it's well, it's free with shipping. There you so, go. And it's $5.60, so it's save up. absolutely free. All you have to do is pay the small shipping and handling. That's the real shipping charge. That's $5.60. Right. Yeah. Cool. We actually lose money if they go international. So you guys who are in Australia, don't, you don't want the book. It's terrible. No. It's uh, only for Americans. Free digital download version. <laughs> Just Frank Kern book, PDF, search it. Yeah, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> it's I'm sure there's that. many of it Just out kidding, there. I hope it's not true. Yeah, I'm sure it's absolutely true. Thanks, Mike. I, you just kind of shafted me out of five dollars and sixty cents. What did I, I could have made? What did I you out of? <laughs> <laughs> shafted me out of. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, I want to thank you for uh, for coming out here. It's like it's like a talk show here. It's like yeah. it's, I feel like, like we come I'm out, we talk, we talk about like your book. I it's like your latest going movie. On in the pool, you know. Uh, but there's nothing back there. They'll be here later. Now, what's uh? These are our. Tell me all this. Let's see. I've got a. You're trying to get rid of me, but I'm not. I really don't have anything else to do. Okay, then you. All right, so. This is, uh, this is our uh, Webinar Jam Go to Webinar Google Hangouts comparison. So first of all, we've been talking about the comparison with GoToWebinar. We're going to have Brandy on a little bit later. Um, she teaches people how to do Google Hangouts. And w the reason why we felt Webinar Jam was good is because of all these little X's here that Google Hangouts didn't do. It was a great back-end solution. It just didn't have the front-end marketing machine. So this created the both here. So as we can see, uh, this is fantastic. Where was the one-click sign-up technology? Is great. Yeah, and uh, so there's a couple of other cool things that we're going to be doing. We're talking with the guys from Lead Pages mm -hmm. and uh, the guys over at Megaphone. Mm -hmm. Delightful uh, group. Yep. Of and because, uh, like Lead Pages, like their video uh, that they spoke about, pre-populating opt-in forms. Check this out. We're uh, in about give us like 30 days for this. Right now, we've got a bunch of features, and guys, we're new software, but lots of lots of new features are going to be coming out over the next weeks, months, and years, obviously, as we listen to users. They have this, you, you obviously know lead pages. And those I think they're great. Right? That and Megaphone, I'm hooked to it, and the Unbounce. Because they have, they host the pages. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way when you go to Facebook, you know, a, a, a month later, you can log in, at, at, you're still logged in, or you can even connect even at other websites to one-click login. So if, let's say I did a promotion with lead pages, um, you know, let's say the webinar jam promotion was all done with lead pages, and we got forty thousand opt-ins. When you went to do your promotion, if any one of those people show up to your page, they're going to pre-populate the name and email address. So they just hit submit. Don't all they've got to do is submit. They don't even have to type their name in. That's actually a big deal. Yes, it really does increase your conversion. Have okay. you ever gone to like buy something and you're like, dude, I just don't want to type. When I see the stuff. form, that, I, I'll pay. I buy everything from Amazon, Amazon just so you don't have so to type the stupid thing. Yeah. I'll, I'll find. I'll go to somebody's website that's selling something, 
and then say, I wonder if they're selling it at, at Amazon. And they <laughs> and are. I'm happy to pay extra in shipping. Because I can one click it. Just to avoid, because it's exhausting. The tendons. Yeah. You, you Billing, know. shipping, all that nonsense. Who wants to do that? Yeah, so, so um, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah, so we're doing the same thing with Webinar Jam. Pretty so soon. being that we host all the registration pages, so imagine not just the first couple of weeks or the first couple of months, but six months later, nine months later, two years, three years later, when an entire community of health, personal development, health and wellness, internet marketing, business to business, has been on webinars over the years, and we mm -hmm. have all of these people registered through all our different people. Now, you're using the system, and you want to go do a webinar, and 30, 40, 50 percent, or whatever the number is of the people that come to that page, all they have to do is one click to get onto the webinar without entering their name and email address. Sky high conversion. Yeah, increases conversion about 20 percent is what we're. we're you know, speaking of repeat uh, webinar attendees, this is another interesting thing about webinars. So, 2012, I really went webinar crazy. In 2013, I just did a few, and they were so dang lucrative. I'm kicking myself for not doing a ton of them. And did I read, some of this. Read that uh, either on Facebook or an email. It was in, yeah. insane. You know, I just kind of did them. I was like, hey, this is fun. A little one off thing. It was, money. It was, it was like magic, is what it was. Came right out of the DVD drive. So <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really come out of the DVD drive. But it, what, here's what it, I found. It ejected flying out. And it did, you, did you flew hold, out. Did you of hold the, a fistful in both hands and then? Jump up with both your legs. And I was wearing a yes. suit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can find pictures of me on clip art sites doing yes, that. I look exactly. a little different, mm -hmm. um, but it was me. So <laughs> what I found was, A, the, the live Q&A, huge deal. The longer you do the Q&A, the more sales so you So tip get. number one, at the end of your presentation, do a Q&A. Yeah, but just do it forever. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go... Until the last question goes. And, or until you're out of energy. I'll do it until I'm exhausted. And I'll be like, dudes, I'm not making sense anymore. You know, I've got to get some food or something. For some reason, that takes a lot out of me to do the live webinar. I would, I would even recommend seeding some questions in case they're a little slow while you ha while it's there, while you're waiting for some to come up, just to slow. handle some of the... But you won't need it, right? Yeah. But just to handle some of the objections that they may have. Like, mm -hmm. we'll have the time for this. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, a great language pattern for that would be, you're probably wondering right now, will I have time for this? And then there's another language pattern, which is uh, old, as, old as the hills, as feel, felt, and found. You know, I know exactly how you feel. I used to feel the same way uh, <laughs> until I found that blah, blah, blah. And it's perfect. And every one of those is a close of the opportunity. Another thing about live Q&A is that if you put little deadlines in the Q&A, you say, listen, you know what I'm going to do, everybody? While we're on this q and I'm going to extend the discount for you. For everyone who goes ahead and orders right now while we're doing this live q and I'll give you this discount. It enables you to apply pressure politely and say, hey, listen, now I'm probably going to be here for another 10, 15 minutes, so if you want to go ahead and get this discount or the extra super cool Q&A bonus, go ahead and enroll now. I look forward to seeing you in the class or in the what have you. Or whatever you know. Let's, so let's do a, a demo of that. Would you like to do? Uh, that? Yeah, but they'll it'll take us a, a minute or two uh, to get the questions. So uh, here's what we're going to do. If you've got a question for Frank Kern, any question an at all? Easy question. Let's easy just question. clarify. A very easy softball question that requires no conscious thought. Is it further to New York or by bus? That's my question for Frank. The first question. <laughs> Definitely by bus. Yeah. So uh, nice yeah, any question? Put it in the chat. Dave is going to pop it into. Uh, into Skype for me to make it a little bit easier to find, and uh, we'll get a couple of questions um, answered uh, answered for you. There's another thing I wanted to tell you while they're doing that about repeat people. So what I found in measuring all of this, this uh, all this stuff obsessively, is that from my business anyway, over half of the buyers are repeat webinar attendees, meaning that 50% plus of the customers would attend the same presentation on multiple dates before they bought which means another reason why you want a really dependable system and if you want to use the hybrid thing unless you just love doing it live or whatever. And uh, that's, that was a big one. How about replays? I don't do them. Really? Uh-uh, never do them. I think now, do you do that, that be, do you do that because you, you tell them ahead of time there won't be a replay and you have to attend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because otherwise they're not going to attend. You know, for me anyway. Like my guys are like, why would I show up? I could just watch the replay and scroll through to the very end. And So I'll... I'll I'll give you something to test for your next webinar, only based on what I found. I found that for every sale that we do for our webinar, we do two sales in the replays. Oh, I believe that follow-up, mm -hmm. there's money in it, but I have a different structure. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, what we, we use the pattern that uh, uh, there may not be a replay due to many reasons based on... Uh, technology. And you might run out of internet. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The internet may run out. It's, it's been low. Yeah. You know, what, if, what if it happened in 2012? 
and the world ended. Could Anything happen. can happen. Yeah. You know, so that, you know, that's why I have lots of seeds. That that's I good. You just carry them around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, GMO corn, everything. <laughs> as long as it's GMO. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's good. No, it's a cheaper time. That's good. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. So the, what we we send the replay out. Usually, um, uh, usually that same night we'll get the replay out uh, because so so my thinking is if they didn't come because they knew where there was a replay but they watched the replay. But what do you do? You probably you're, you're you're much probably doing much cooler like sound. Than that. Exactly. Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah. It might not work better, but it sounds cooler. First of all, I'll do a lot of webinars, right? So I know that they're just because. So you gotta understand, if they don't show up, it doesn't mean they don't want it. If they didn't buy on the webinar, it doesn't mean they don't want it, right? It means number one, you're competing with boobs, kids, phone ringing. You should probably sit and say boobs and kids in the same sentence. That sounded weird. That's not how that was supposed to sound. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you're on the internet. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm gonna attend. Oh my gosh, look, there's Britney Spears half naked or something. Yay! Let me look at that. Oh, the phone rang. And oh gosh, I gotta go pick up the kids from school. Forget the webinar. I'll do it later. So. Don't think that they because they didn't show up. That doesn't mean they're they're interested. And if they don't buy, it doesn't mean they don't want it. You're asking someone to make a very impulsive purchase, and it's illogical for them to do it. So number one, if they don't show up, I'll extend an uh, invitation to attend again. So I view webinars as campaigns, like A to Z, you know, multi webinars. So your replay is another live event. It's definitely another live event because if you make it fun for them, right, and each one a unique experience through that live Q and A. The guy who didn't buy on today's webinar will come back and see the webinar again just to go through that again, have his questions answered, be reassured, or whatever. You don't have that same level of connection with a replay. The next thing is I found that if they do attend the webinar and don't buy, I've gotten a much bigger bump in conversion by deploying a two-stage follow-up sequence. Stage number one is called an objection handling video sequence. So this is changing the medium. So you're uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll the campaign will be webinar, 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 but from the webinar. You branch off into other mediums with it's video. always it's always webinar webinar webinar. But if you show up on the webinar and you hear the whole thing and you don't buy, mm -hmm. you're not getting invited to more webinars. You're in now the follow up campaign. But if you don't show up, you're getting invited to more webinars. So a guy who has to attend multiple webinars before he buys cannot stay through the pitch. If he stays through the pitch, he's out of the invite list and he's in the follow up list. So let's take out the Q and A. How mm -hmm. long are your webinars? About 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's about um, an and 89 hour. 89 minutes of that is pitch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so about an hour, hour and 10 minutes of, of uh, proof of concept, case study, mm -hmm. and, uh, and teaching. Yeah. I try to do mine a tremendous amount of teaching mm -hmm. because that's why I get so much show up rate and that's mm -hmm. why they're always full. Because I, I believe, I think it was Gary Ben Savanga said this, but I forgot the real guy. Said that the promotion itself should be something of value in and of itself. I believe that, you know, and if you if you make them like that, then people will attend and they'll like you and they'll buy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're obviously providing no value today. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, they get to look at this. This is beautiful. A, I figured if we put a screen behind us and move our lips, that they'll buy. You know, Watch this. So. Detachable <laughs> thumb right there. You see that? That's entertainment. Happy Friday. It was a song called yeah. Detachable Thumb, wasn't it? No. Oh. Different appendage. Oh, different. <laughs> yeah. Pinky. Yeah. So, a right, smaller so, appendage. Yeah. So now the video, <laughs> pinky toe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Detachable pinky toe. So at the end of this webinar, mm -hmm. you go to a video sales letter or, or a video you said. Mm -mm. Uh, so I'll walk you through the process. Okay. So if someone attends the webinar all the way up to the close, mm -hmm. if they get, make it that far, they will get the follow-up sequence. If they don't make it that far, they're reinvited. They're reinvited. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people will leave before the close or whatever. They're getting reinvited. Mm -hmm. If they stay until the close but don't buy, they get a two-part follow-up sequence. Part number one is maybe 12 hours after the webinar, they'll get a video sequence that says uh, it's called an objection handling video sequence. What do you know? See, I want to know what that is. <laughs> oh, we got a question, uh, Frank. Is that really a pink shirt you're wearing? And that's from some guy named Jeff. Yes, Jeff, it is. Well, really? Thanks for noticing. Um, so it's a brilliant question by great use of time. Um, so thanks, Jeff. That was great. So, thanks, Dave. Uh, <laughs> so we're trying to be serious. Now we have man. four more questions. This is serious you. stuff. We're talking about webinars and stuff. And appendages. And appendages. So uh, first thing you do is a, a video objection handling sequence. So it's usually three videos. You take the top objections and you frame them as questions and you teach around them in video. So it allows you to give more valuable content to the guys who've already stayed with you 90 whole minutes but didn't buy. You know they're interested or else they wouldn't stay there. How do you frame that video uh, based on the fact that they, 
they saw the webinar. Do you say, since you were on the webinar? Definitely. Okay. You say, all right, so I'll give you the whole script, but I'll be brief about it, so the, the pattern to it. So video number one is, hey, thank you so much for being on uh, the training the other day. I really enjoyed having you on there, and I've been getting a lot of questions, and the biggest question I've been getting so far is, let's just make up a question, what if I'm no good at PowerPoint? And I want to do webinars, but I'm no good at PowerPoint. You know, that's a great question. I know exactly how you feel. I used to feel the same way. And here's what I discovered. I want to walk you through in this video a very simple way to create a PowerPoint presentation that looks great in webinars. So let's go to the computer, and I'll walk you through it. And then you just teach, right? So, I mean, that's just the intro. And then you genuinely, I mean, 100%. I like the steam. These are the three animations I use. Here's how to do it. it simple, yeah. yeah, whatever. Like, really whatever. just overcome that objection. And at the end you deliver the second language pattern, which is the closing pattern, which says, hey, listen, you know, you're on my webinar. Some great stuff, guys. Listen to this. Yes, yeah, you know, this is more important than the short code. You are, this, this is called, I call it anyway, the triple fact close, mm -hmm. right? It's an NLP thing, where if you state two obvious facts, the third one is easily more accepted mm -hmm. as true. So you can say, so I'll, I'll do this for the, each fact. So thanks so much. You watch my webinar. You're listening to me right now in this video. So that's two facts that are obvious. <laughs> And you know doing webinars can greatly have a profound effect on your business. That's why, so that third, that's why, that third is, and you know, mm -hmm. I want them to accept that as a fact, because I said the other two things which were mm -hmm. factual. So then you segue into the close. So you know that doing webinars is, is, can have a profoundly beneficial impact on your business, and that's why I want you to enroll in the webinar training today. Now here's exactly what we're going to go over. Then you just go on your close. So what a we what a post webinar objection handling sequence does is it allows you to stack more value and continue to be a benefit to the user, genuinely build that goodwill, and reclose every time through a different modality than and, the first close. And it's never a pitch. It's never a pitch. It's, it's handling questions that that they're gonna either they had specific pain points about mm -hmm. or they didn't even realize and you're telling oh, you're telling them something, they say, oh, wow, I didn't even think of that, yeah. and it, it handles that as well. But you usually want to make it like the top three things that would freak them out. You know, like, what are they, and you'll get them in your Q&A, you know, yeah. and, this, and for us to expect someone to remember the Q&A is just, it's just unnatural, right? Yeah, and we're, gonna ha and we're gonna get that information from the Q&A, yeah. right? You know, you're gonna find out the questions, like, we, we had many, Donna compiled some stuff for me that, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, are they really concerned about that? And she's like, but yeah, you'd be surprised how many people are at the help yeah. for that. So, you know, we think we know what the pain points are, but they, they will tell you, and then you just use that, mm -hmm. and you're going right to the point of the biggest pain because they, you give those top three things. Exactly right. Yeah, so you address the skepticism. Where other marketers will say, oh, my God, there's a skeptic. Let's just juggle some puppies and hope that they forget about the skepticism until they buy in a more effective way. So, hey, you know what? A lot of people have this concern. It's a valid concern, and let me show you how to work through it. And then help them, and they're like, oh, dude, sweet. Open the door, pave the way. You know, it's what Matthew McConaughey would do. Here's how he would do it. He'd say, man, all right, thank you all for getting on that webinar. It was real cool. And uh, a lot of people have this question, man. We'll help you out with it. And this, I mean, it's the same thing, you know, it's that being all super right, cool. All right, all right, all right. Exactly That's right. That's how we're going to do it. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, it's the McConaughey marketing method. Yeah, he'll be on in a little while. We're going to talk coming. about his. Uh, Is he going to have a shirt off? Best actor. Yep, exactly. Put on a little more weight since yeah, we well. have Jared Leto. Hey, on, who has in a it? dress? Yeah. yeah, it's my dress, by the way. <laughs> Actually, with John Reese. <laughs> John Reese playing Jared Leto yeah, exactly. in a dress. His beautiful performance is really heart wrenching. It's uh, Jared Leto's secrets. <laughs> Dot biz. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> so after the video. So there's a second phase. So you're going to clean up a lot with the video, but still not all of them who attended will have purchased. So what you do is we call it the countdown sequence. Can we get uh, Frank a bottle of water or something like that? Something. Just random gifts would be nice. So the countdown sequence is straight mass control, right? So you set a deadline. You say, okay, let's say it's four days, right? It's kind of well, basically it's a four-day cash machine without the discount. So you say, all right, this offer expires in four days or price hike goes up in four days or bonuses will go, whatever the reason, you know. And as you get closer to that four days, you do two things. You remind them of the deadline, and you stack on a bonus. So you're not saying just deadline, deadline, deadline. You're saying, hey, there's a deadline, and by the way, good news, I decided to give you some more cool stuff, just like McConaughey would do. He'd be like, man, it's a deadline on Tuesday, but you got some cool stuff coming up, you know? That's Thank right. you, Tiger. We're going to go so dance. Huge. It's huge. So cool. Oh, by the way, uh, AJ, your microphone was on before when you went to the men's room. Yeah. Sassy. I was going to tell you later. And it was impressive, just by the way. I mean, you sound like a mule in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's really something. 
It's like, it's like he was pouring something out of a bottle. You know? It's intimidating. I can't go for like a week now. Dude. I'm like a, like a five-gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. so, anyway. Uh, all right, so, so that's, the, that's the countdown. See, and that is when it really, really pours on. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of, we lost the whole thing yeah, with that. Exactly. Really is, yeah. So webinar, if they don't show, if they don't make it to the end and see the pitch, invite them, invite to, them to the next webinar. Mm -hmm. Don't do the replays because you're going to do a, another campaign for live, live, live. And if you do replays, you train them not to show. Mm. I've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I like it when they show up. Yeah. Because it enables. Because look, really, what a webinar is ultimately is a live Q and A delivery system, a pre-framing of a live Q and A. Here's why That's I think. That's where the sales. Why come. I think webinars work compared to video sales sales letters, or why we say they have the highest um, visitor value to a website over any other medium, whether it be sales letter, video sales letter. My my point is that any time that we market to somebody, it's interrupted. It's always they're always involved in something else. And if I were to show you my, my Gmail inbox, you would be like, dude, how can you possibly have 1,400 unread emails? I would be like, don't buy that generic penis enlargement pill because <laughs> it does not work. I and I could not get a refund from those people. I got my refund, and well, it didn't work. Yeah. So I feel that when, like, I, for me, email is a pain. I, I've gotten so bad with email that the only way that I do email is when somebody texts me and says, I sent you an email. <laughs> and then right. the other three above it and three behind it. Know Take that a photograph of the email Dave, and every, text it to you. Everybody in the company here knows that. Like We work in our project management system. And, and if it's everywhere else but email, it's fine. And I think we're all busy. I think we're, we, um, we find relief in Facebook and social media, and we see a pain point with email. Mm -hmm. And then you do your, you're writing your sales letter, you're doing the webinar presentation, all that stuff, and then finally it's like Gmail, 172 emails, like, uh, nine o'clock at night. And so if it's nine o'clock at night and you're going through your emails, it's literally archive, archive. What are there's some real cool thing? It could help help you with your business. Click, and now you go to a video sales letter, and you say, and it says, hi, this is Frank Kern, and in this short video that doesn't have a scrub bar that could be 45 minutes long because you know how they go. Like literally, I think people go <laughs> to these I'm things. I'm definitely going to yeah, try to sell you the something. The bounce rates are, right, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to try to sell you something. That's, so, and they work. But, Beautifully. Yeah. But you're being interrupted, especially at a point of pain. And I see that the webinar, even if it happens in the inbox, says to somebody, we're doing this in a few days at 8 o'clock. And then they say, okay, let me register. And if I go to a video sales letter, I swear I've been in four or five minute video sales letters that I hover up to see how much time it is because I think I'm 30 minutes into it. And it's only four minutes and 30 seconds. And I see that the, the bar has so much more to go. Mm -hmm. And I'll bookmark the page and if I come back, I come back. If I don't, I don't. This is usually I, about one out of every 7,000 VSLs you probably go back to. That's right. To. <laughs> but for a webinar, you're saying, okay, this is important to me. Mm -hmm. I'm raising my hand by putting my name and email saying, submit, I want to attend. Follow-up systems tell you to get on. Text message tells you to get on. It's starting in a half hour. And if I know I'm going to be on a webinar, even just to, to learn, I'm going to block out 90 minutes out of my schedule. I'll say, well, I can't do dinner at 7 because I... I wanted to watch that webinar. Mm -hmm. So you move things out of the way. And I look at it as it's permission-based training marketing. People the magic say, word is pull. Mm -hmm. It's pull. Mm -hmm. You are pulling them to you as opposed to pushing. pushing. Yeah, and pull always works mm -hmm. better. Always will. Has since before we were, you know, since Robert, it wasn't Robert Collier. Who was the guy who really started with pull? Um, Claude Hopkins. Mm -hmm. You know, since all the way back then. And George Halings with the little reports and the, the wrote in the tent and the depression, you know. Um, it's Pull always, always all works All the distractions better. are gone. Yep. Uh, they've said they want to be there, but when they finally do show up, I mean, their hand is raised so high. Mm -hmm. They've blocked an hour to 90 minutes out of, out of the webinar to listen to you, as opposed to that VSL that they immediately know you're going to try to sell them something. And you frame, here's what you're going to learn on this webinar. They come to learn. They know there might be an offer at the end. They, but, they but will be weirded out if there isn't an offer. Yeah, they're, they're excited if they're interested in the concept. If, especially in, in B2B. People, they have an online business. They want to go further. And mm -hmm. if you can show them a way to do it, you know, they're, they're happy to pay. But the video sales letter pitch, it works, but it's tougher. That's why, that's why if, if you've got a product, and I also feel that it works well for price points over 297 uh, as well. 297, 497, 1,000, 2,000, and up. It's I sold $10,000 products on a webinar 
I've sold $7,800 products on a webinar. I've sold... Um, I don't think it can be sold on a VSL. Yeah. I oh, just don't. No, there's I, no way. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll say there's no way. Yeah, someone no, will do it, you know, yeah, the, got the more power to them, really. Right? No Q&A, no, yeah. uh, no training involved. It's, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, it's push instead of pull. It's going to be much more difficult to... Yeah. to uh, I couldn't even imagine asking for 7,500. Like, here, watch this video now. And, and then, then give me 70. Yeah. If you have a great relationship with them, you probably could. Mm -hmm. It was part of a launch type See, process. Yes. Or something, yeah. But from a straight... From the webinar, position, it right? slows it down. Here's the proof of concept. Here's how it's been done. Here are some people that have done it before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold your hand. You're going to come out to my to my ranch, and we're going to do this. Like wherever that value is, you have the time to earn the right. You can to demonstrate. Do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In real time, demonstrative selling. TM. How about secrets. Uh, biz. The webcam. Have you? Uh, Dude, that's a great. Th so the last webinar I did. Um, this is, I got so lucky, man. So I'm doing the webinar hybrid style, you know, and um, it's before the plug-in came out, so I'm doing it. You have to go, when I did it, I had to go to GoToWebinar, set this thing up, and then I paid this girl named Erica, who is a professional video game player, to, like, work the magic for me, so I just show up and do Q&A, you know. So I show up to do Q&A, and I hit the wrong button on GoToWebinar, and the video camera comes on. Now, I don't know what's on. Mm. So I'm talking, I'm like, all right, man, we got a question from Jim here, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I look up, and I'm like, what the hell is that green light doing on the laptop? Like, <laughs> just like yours, like the little, like that, right? yeah, and I'm looking, I'm like, dudes, can y'all see me right now? And they're typing in, yeah, dude. I'm like, oh, my God, man. Well, Sales were huge, out. though. Yeah. It was a really, really big webinar. And it was, uh, you had no shirt on. I, thankfully, they didn't realize because I have so much body hair that they didn't know. <laughs> the I, guy asked yeah. the question, the first FAQ was, Frank, is that really a brown shirt? Yeah, because of the body. <laughs> it was. And there's, why isn't there any logo? Right. Why are you wearing a fur coat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you inhumane bastard. <laughs> and who wears a short sleeve fur coat anyway? Yeah. That's just weird. Yeah. yeah. So the I would uh, I would definitely do them from this point forward on camera. Yeah, I think sure. especially when you're a person of influence, and that's the type of marketing that probably everyone listening to today. They're all some type of topic expert or want to be at least, and that's where they're going towards being an author, a speaker, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when you have an audience that truly admires you. Hearing the voice behind a PowerPoint, as opposed to seeing that person, as, as we've all, always said, they, they get to get much closer to you, and we're like, oh my goodness, he's actually a regular guy like me just sitting in his home office with, uh, with a webcam on. Yeah, so, and you know how opulent my home office is. Yes. I have a $200 IKEA desk. It was a desk and a computer with wires coming out of it. Yeah. And you said that's what runs the entire empire. That is exactly right. But it is a, no ordinary laptop. It's a vintage laptop. I have a vintage MacBook Pro from like 2010. A pink with uh, yellow oh, those stripes. Yeah. And a hoverboard nice. from Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I will sit on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Real plastic chairs. So we've got some questions here for you. Okay. Over and above the pink shirt. Okay. Steve asks. Now, is this us? Are we pixelated back there? Is that what's going on? Uh, we look more like that. This is just my terrible laptop uh, here. That's the actual feed there. Okay. So, do non tech prospects show up to webinars? Is yes. that for Frank? Sure. Are these uh, questions specifically for Frank or just any questions about webinars? Oh, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Do non-tech prospects show up to webinars? Well, okay, so the, the question is the more the technology goes up, the more barriers of entry to techno technophobes. So uh, back in the day, very easy to get someone like my mother to just dial in. Let's say she wanted to you know, get in and, and dial in. She could listen from her landline phone. Today we're telling people to get on their computer uh, you know, or get on their smartphone now with Webinar Jam. You can use your smartphone, your Kindle device, your Android device. So the question is, uh, do you think that there's a fear about getting away from landline and listening in to the old teleseminar as opposed to these presentations. I I'm trying to think if I know anybody that actually has a landline. A, you know, and I'm looking at us right now, and I was just thinking as you were saying that, and I'm looking at us, I'm like, who are those middle-aged white guys <laughs> in the thing? Yeah, <laughs> like, that right. cannot possibly be us. Yeah, we, you know, but like, these people are even older than me, and, and, and no one's got a damn landline anyway. But I, don't you, a, I, I don't have a landline. Yeah. I didn't even realize that I didn't have a landline until somebody... You have to ask spill out day, something that says home number. They said, and you're yeah, like, what's what? your phone number? And they said, in your home phone. And I was like, that's, um, well, what's a home phone? Like, what is this? Who, who even has that anymore? Technology of which you speak. This and who thing. even answers a home phone if you had one? That's like the ultimate, like, <laughs> ring, and you're just staring at this thing ringing. Like, you <laughs> you're know, like, what the hell is that? 
I was watching hey. a movie the other day, and an answer, old movie, like seven years old, an answering machine picked up, and I realized, like, wow, do you remember when you used to come home and Definitely. hit the thing and said, you have seven and then you're new like, messages. Is it cool to play this? Because what if someone, what, what is it, some, well, I used to have this buddy named Bennett, <laughs> and he had an answering machine on his desk at work, and he worked for Department of Family and Children's Services. And this guy was like, we had this game we would play to see who could do the most horrible stuff to the other guy. And I would always call down there when I knew he was at lunch, and other people would be around his desk to hear the message I was leaving. I went, hi, Bennett, it's Paul again. Listen, you haven't been calling me, and I'm really upset about it. And he would just ended up getting so much crap from the people <laughs> at work. You know, That's the kind of thing that you can really expect to learn about on webinars like these. But to answer your question, no, I don't think there's any problem. One of my favorite clients, a guy named Carl White, works exclusively with the mortgage lender industry, a consultant to these guys. These are all like bona fide old crotchety white guys you know I mean think about like our dads or something well my dad's really more like Keith Richards and Clint Eastwood combined but your average American dad right these dudes they're like I can't read the damn iPhone text machine you know those dudes 100% webinar selling well not 100 sometimes live events but a tremendous reliance on webinars for sale. when I go to Doesn't matter. your events our events Brendan's events you know what I see I see 45 to 65 year old uh, 40% female, uh, ex-corporate America people, mm -hmm. all walking around with iPhones, uh, uh, iPads. It's that my mother and my father have one, and they they never use anything. My father's telling me, "Do you have this app, Mike? Do you have this?" App? So we we had uh, we were going over some of the FAQs today, um, and Donna showed me some of the FAQs, like why why some people are hesitant to ask. And somebody said, "I understand people can't dial in." And I said, well, Webinar Jam sends out a link that they could click instead of having to dial, go back to the other screen, forgot the PIN number. Remember, you ever do that? Get the email, oh, go God. back to the yeah, dial pad, terrible. and you're trying to 747, 64 through, PIN is 47, and you, get, you keep getting it wrong. Ours is one click, and not only do they show up right into the webinar, but they can also see the webinar on their smartphone, something GoToWebinar can't do. So... You can have, watch the webinar on your iPhone? On your iPhone. Or yeah, your once iPad you, or once you click it, Since it's a, it's a YouTube video from you Google. You can watch it in the car while driving. In the car while driving. And texting simultaneously. Yes. You don't even have to. The cars today drive themselves. But if you're a passenger, <laughs> if you're in a limo, if you're on a train, right? You know, a lot of commuters um, will sometimes be on the train. But instead of just listening because they dialed in, they could actually watch the presentation on their, on their iPhone. So the question was that, that, that our, was asked in our, in our help desk, they came back and said, yeah, but what about that person that wants to use a landline? As you said, like who's using it? Who, if you have an opportunity, register for a webinar, who would say, but I'd rather dial it? But if, if they did, and we don't provide that service, well, then you know what? You might just lose that sale. And in our case, instead of thousands of dollars being made, we would lose that sale, but still continue to do that. And these are the things that when, um, when I used to do coaching, there was a certain point that I would say to somebody, you're looking for a reason for this not to work. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you all the proof, and you're looking for these one things to say, yeah, but yeah, well, what about this? Well, what about that? These things are happen. That's life. What if you get a flat? If you're going to buy a car, and they say, well, what if you get a flat? And you say, well, you know, our tires today are... You'll always find something to, to find a reason not yeah. to buy. And so, yeah, it's the same thing. What if the customer uh, can't use, um, you know, needs to dial in with a landline? That we can't help with the landline. If they get on their smartphone, if they, they will registered click. for the webinar on the internet. Now, I did work at NASA as their chief engineer before I forgot to put the gas cap on that last space shuttle mission. Yes. Which I think they overreacted about that a little bit. Apollo say. 18, where the the aliens were there. Oh, that was me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm a little bit more advanced, but logic does dictate, according to Pythagorean law, that if they registered for the webinar on the internet. They do have internet access and likely would prefer to access the very thing they registered on the internet for on the what internet. What if that customer called their friend on the landline and said, can you register this for me? See, <laughs> that this could, there is always that I'm remote not buying possible. webinar jam. I don't All buy right, uh, this question this game. comes from Andy. Frank, if you weren't... Oh, I love these questions. If you weren't a top webinar presenter, what would you be? What kind of tree would you be? I would be a giant marijuana bush. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Curing okay. glaucoma and insomnia Frank, across the world. How do I find your upcoming webinars? 
Go to, go to uh, get on my list. MassControlSite.com. What, what is God, it? What, still is there? FrankKern.com, of all things. Yes. FrankKern, just a regular good old Just Frank good old FrankKern. And, and get a free report or a book or something. Something. And opt in. And he, uh, you spam, right? Oh, my God. All, all day, every day. Yeah. You know, because the Can Spam Act says that we can spam. It says so, so quite clearly. That said First thing I'm going to do is just start sharing the email address with everybody I know. Yeah. Millions of them. <laughs> yeah. From yeah, our beachfront conglomerate home yes. that we'll just share them with and control the marketplace. As if people handle. actually show up to your house in Mercedes Benz. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All right. Work. Next. Uh, Frank, do you think that these Hangout webinars could be a way to have people register for a consulting call? Definitely. Done it. I sold. Um, that The one that I was uh, screwed up intentionally because no one likes to show off, <laughs> where I've had the screen sideways and everything, that sold uh, group coaching, which is essentially the same thing, consulting. And um, it was great. Got 15 members from that, and that was $57,000 per month of recurring revenue from that campaign. So, yeah, and you were absolutely right on the offer structure. You don't sell the consulting on the webinar. You sell the initial free consulting call, which then converts them into a customer. Hey, it says, I'm providing a uh, results in advanced presentation to a targeted niche audience. I'm looking at how I can use this and apply it. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. Next question for Frank. How central to your webinar presentations is the use of NLP? I don't know NLP. Um, I really don't. I get that a lot. And I actually have a client who has a technology which I think is superior to NLP, even though I don't really know it. But she sort of walked me through this. Her name's Sharon Pearson, if you want to study her. And it's called Metadynamics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think language patterns are a big deal. And I, I think NLP has a lot of therapeutic use in, in terms of persuasion. I think it just helps you communicate more effectively, and the more effectively you can communicate, the better you can persuade. So I know that's a weird answer, but I don't sit around and think like, okay, from a, an NLP perspective, how is this going to work? Because yeah. I really don't know it, because the books are horribly boring. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I've never studied NLP, but I do... But you did it beautifully, by the way, when you are saying, well, you know, the person asked this, and it was like a classic segue into overcoming an objection by talking to the third yeah, person. Right. Yeah. I, just like you, we're big fans of psychology books. Mm -hmm. you know, all the, Especially the ones with pictures. Yeah, yeah. and well, Renee's, you know, uh, he, had, uh, he came out with, um, I think, some holiday sauce uh, book with lots of pictures. Yeah. 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 All these, um, all these books on human psychology is really that, and obviously having a little bit of a sales background, I think, probably helped uh, both of us over the years. But uh, truly understand that there's a certain way that you can say something, frame it, and then and then say something. Everything we do, the more effective we are in everything we do, whether it's relationships, friendships, it's how we can. Uh, persuade, persuade people to the things that we think is right in this world, mm -hmm. and being able to show another way to look at things. You know, so uh, so yeah, I don't think it's necessarily NLP, but I definitely think the more that you understand what makes humans tick and how how you can frame the words that you use, can definitely help you in your presentations, guys. Yeah. All right. So uh, next, Frank, if you were selling, whoops, if you were selling out live seminars. Would you use the same technique you teach in the ultimate webinar blueprint? Definitely. Absolutely. And, what is that? Um, well, there's five parts to a webinar. The first one is the introduction where you tell them what they're going to learn and you sort of resell them on the idea of being on the webinar. You never want to forget that you always have to constantly be selling the value of what you're doing. So because we're online and because attention is so hard to get, because distractions, distractions is a new thing. <laughs> That's Friday. Yeah. Because distractions run at a ramp up and out. You have to constantly be re-engaging. So the first part of the webinar is, hey, here's what we're going to cover, and here's why this is important, and here's why you're not going to get this anywhere else. That's part one, the introduction. Part number two is called the difference, and that's when you address their skepticism head on. Because chances are, it's not the first webinar they've ever been on, chances are they bought something and been disappointed in it, chances are they are naturally skeptical of marketers. It's human nature. Most people try to avoid that or circumvent it. I suggest you address it head on with good information. So you do that in that stage called the difference, right? And there's some patterns that you use in that. The third stage is a setup for the content, and I call it the bonding phase. That's when you tell some stories that are relevant, how you made the discovery that you're going to share with them on the webinar is one classic example. Feel felt found is another classic storyline. The fourth phase is where you deliver the actual content, and the fifth phase is the pitch. And all of those phases could be used to sell anything, whether it's a course, whether it's a car, whether it's real estate whether it's a live seminar, whether it's a further action, like book a consult with me or whatever. That's, that's the formula that works very, very well for me. Excellent. And it's, uh, it's the money that makes our businesses run. So we've got to get them uh, somewhere 
so that we can provide our services and we're going to do them on webinars. So Stan asks this. This is a good question. Uh, how much do you spend on average uh, on Facebook ads to get 100 attendees to your webinar? So if you were to get 100 people to register. Between 5 and $8 per registrant depending on the age of the campaign. So when the campaign begins, I'll spend maybe two dollars mm -hmm. per registrant. But as the days pass and that audience gets saturated, it'll go all the way up to eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So That's what a are good what are some of the I metrics? I love this actual math. This is good. Yeah. You know, it's a lot better than the shirt. The question. metrics that you measure in terms of uh, webinar uh, dollar per lead from the Facebook, dollar per attendee. What type of what type of those metrics are important? Dollar per attendee. Dollar yeah. per attendee. And cost per acquisition and cost per attendee. So, Although I don't measure cost per attendee that much because I know if they don't show up, they're going to show up on the next one. Okay, so, yeah, because, because yeah. of your method. So so you do measure the dollar per registration, but it's more important to you dollar for the attendee. dollar per attendee because you mm -hmm. know once they register for the first, if they don't show up, you're going to follow up with multiple ones and mm -hmm. finally get them on it. And the ultimate thing is dollar per campaign. So because I don't... I view a webinar campaign as a complete A to Z experience, beginning with point of registration. Like before a webinar even occurs, I have something called an indoctrination sequence, which is two videos and then some handouts and then reminders, then webinar, then objection sequence, and then countdown sequence. So let's talk about the indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, we'll stay on the numbers and then we'll go to that. Yeah. So um, how much of a return on investment are you seeing if it costs you, let's say, $2 to get the registration, mm -hmm. the person to register? How much... Is that person worth to you on average? Just from the webinar campaign? Yeah, it, by the time it's all said and done, for every person that registers, if it's costing you 2 to $8. I'd say results, not typical. Right. Your yes, results may this vary. This is certainly not any sort right. of claim to what anyone will accomplish. Um, I'd say about a 300% ROI just from the webinar campaign, which to me is, I'm just getting a customer at that point. So I mean, for every dollar ROI, you're spending, you're getting three back. Yeah, from, easy. From the, from the campaign. whole campaign, though. Yeah. Now, it's not just. I don't view one webinar as the thing. No, right, yeah, it's a campaign, right? It's the, this holistic video marketing follow, yeah, All that stuff that you, you said goes this way, mm -hmm. and if, if they don't see, you keep inviting them. If they do see it and don't buy, you mm -hmm. go down vertical. Well, you got boxes and arrows and flow charts and stuff. So if you're spending 100, you'll make three. Mm -hmm. If you spend 1,000, you'll spend, you'll make Yeah, I mean, my, my goal is like, how can I get, How can you know, I spend a million? <laughs> yeah, how can we get a goal? If, yeah, if I could ramp and find that many eyeballs with my mm -hmm. audiences, how can I get up there and keep the numbers the same? Uh, okay, so you mentioned something called, uh, and quick little uh, note here, guys. Um, we have um, a few more people here in the studios that are going to be joining us soon. Uh, Brandy, who's an uh, expert on Google Hangouts. Uh, Mario Brown will be joining us as well. Is he enforcer well. in there? Yes, he Where is. is he? And AJ, you had uh, oh, sorry. AJ's doing stuff like this. Gang signs. He's flashing. Gang and I say, signs. AJ, you wanted to say something? He goes, so, all right, so an indoctrination process, mm -hmm. so they register on a Monday and the webinar's on a Friday mm -hmm. or something like that. I so, like it to be like usually Monday around Thursday or that four-day spread. There's another thing you learn doing this. The, the farther out from when they register to the time the webinar is, the, le the less likely they are to show up, which is irrelevant because if you keep doing them, they will show up. Yeah. You know? but but you, like, you, like, you like to get them in within 48 hours. I like it at 72 usually because I want to indoctrinate. Right. So the purpose of an indoctrination sequence is twofold. Number one is to increase attendance. Mm -hmm. Number two is to make them like you and trust you and to eliminate as many objections as possible prior to ever showing up. So here's how you do it. First day, or first thing you give them is a video, and the purpose of video number one is to resell them on attending. And I call the what I call this the what, why, why, when framework. Mm -hmm. So you simply say, hey, uh, thanks again. This is Dr. Frank Kern, attorney at law. Thank you so much for registering for our upcoming webinar. You always want to use fake medical credentials and legal credentials in any sort of presentation. Obviously, that's a joke. You know. I want to thank you for showing up for this, uh, for registering for this upcoming webinar. Here's what we're going to be going over. So that's the first in that framework. You say, you know, the top three things you can do to X, Y, Z, whatever. The next phases are really, really important. And is thing part two is why this is important mm -hmm. and why this is different from everything else that Brilliant. you've been on. Because mm -hmm. right, those are two objections they're going to have. You know, you got to understand, your typical guy is always going to think you're full of shit. Mm -hmm. Even if they know you. This is, we're just conditioned that way because everybody's full of shit. Mm -hmm. you know? So we're like, they're, oh, this is terrible. We don't think, think if you took a room of 100 buyers in any industry, said, how many people have had a bad experience in this industry? Mm -hmm. All hands would go up. Yeah. 
You know, so we have to constantly overcome that by demonstration. So the final piece of that is when. Then you can just say that in your email or on the web page or whatever, so you have to make a video. That's video number one. That'll bump your, your conversions, uh, your attendance, right? Video number two is you think about a big objection they could have in their mind prior to attending, and you do the same thing that you would do in an objection handling video, but you don't pitch. You say, hey, everybody, um, this, uh, and usually I like to have this, by the way, happen the day before the webinar. So uh, first of all, I just want to let you know, you know, we have this training upcoming tomorrow, and before you attend, I want to help you get up to speed. I'm getting a lot of questions about how to do a PowerPoint presentation, you know, because I know we're going to learn the most effective ways to do webinars, and a lot of folks out there are freaked out. They don't have PowerPoint or whatever. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Documents to build a presentation, give you a little presentation framework. That's all you do. The purpose of that is, number one, to demonstrate value. So someone had mentioned results in advance earlier in the question. That's like my main marketing operandi, to always give them results in advance of the transaction. So that is effective. Thing number two is they're seeing you and they're hearing you and they're feeling like they know, like, and trust you, which is going to make them more malleable to your will on the webinar itself. It sounds sinister, but this is presupposing you're selling good stuff and helping people. Thing number three is if you don't overcome that objection prior to the webinar, they're going to hear about 20% of what you say. The other 80% of mental bandwidth is going to be going, well, but, but I don't have PowerPoint. What about PowerPoint? I don't know how to use PowerPoint. But if I don't have PowerPoint, I can't do this. And when's he going to tell me how to fix PowerPoint? Yeah. So that everything you say, they're going to hear like two out of ten yeah. words, which is either losing 80% of your message. So it increases your conversion on the webinar. That's why I get good webinar stuff. It's not just the webinar. It's the the indoctrination, the actual five-part webinar things, the 12 pieces of a close, and then the entire post-webinar follow-up sequence that works. You are so damn brilliant. Well, and good-looking. Let's yeah. not forget that, Let's okay? Get, now that we're really coming to the truth yeah, of that what was we're really my, here about. That was going to yeah. be my second. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. No, seriously. So just as you were talking, I said, I've got the name of Frank Kern's next product. That's great. It really is a stumper for me. Yes. Indoctrination. You think that's, I'm, that's pretty good? I'm telling you. How about indoctrinationalism? <laughs> that could be even better. 2.0. There you go. Yeah. Secrets. 1.0 was so just good, put, you've never even heard of it. Just put secrets there. Just secrets. The stuff that I you're like talking that. about, I'm telling you, like just because webinars are so important, and the fact that campaigns today are not, we were saying it uh, the other day, we, we used were to diligently launch, working. Diligently yeah. slicing and hooking. That's so bad. That, remember the, the luxury of being able to do a launch? And open at noon and close at 12:15, and then maybe open at noon and clo close at four. Like Reese just did for yeah. those Amazon guys. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Nowadays, this launch is going to do a million dollars today. It did 25,000 on first day. That's it. And everybody was like, ah. I said, guys, it doesn't work that way anymore. We have to, we have to build, literally indoctrinate. Mm -hmm. I think that that the timeline has stretched now. Yeah, Evan Pagan's affiliate video said the same thing. And the reason why he's even indoctrinating his aff affiliates is to tell them, don't bail on day one. You're not going to see the result. It doesn't work that way anymore. So there's an ed education process that's, that's going out there saying that it, we're stretching these things out. Lunches used to be four days, close for three, open for a day. Mm -hmm. Now they're going two, three weeks. And we're seeing more webinars being used. I think that, that there is a great need for indoctrination. Dude, you, you, always. Mm. I mean, because they forget. Mm. Like, you know, you have to constantly be refreshing the relationship. Mm. And it's, you know, you don't just go to church once and go, okay, I'm saved. This is great. Mm. You got, dude, you got to go every Sunday, man, and get that message in and all oh, constantly. That's right. Yeah, or else they. That's video one for That's video one. It's Frank Kern talking yeah. about church. Yeah. And then they're like, okay. <laughs> I'm talking about it in a good light. Don't get me. You know? Brilliant stuff, my man. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming out here today. All right, is it time for, can I, is, who's next? Can I introduce the next guy? Yes, uh, it's going to be actually Brandy. Uh, is, uh, so we're going to get her mic'd up. AJ, were you asking if you were coming back on? Since we went uh, an hour and 20 minutes, I'm going to just bring it. Oh, what do you want me to put on there? Uh, this is I like random, random stuff. Yeah, this is great. Uh, we can hit about, refresh on the thing. Uh, we can put. Uh, we can get like this beautiful we, picture. Some of buggy. Andy. That's a nice headline. We can make fun of this uh, picture of Andy up here. That's yeah, pretty which, hilarious. Oh, which one? Oh, yeah, this one. one. This is great. Yeah, let me see if I can zoom in on. He that. looks like he's so seductive. Yeah, he's like, Andy, yeah, lady. Where is we, Andy? Do you know that we had a Hector took an image? 
right from Google Images. It's a great way to get snagged by Getty Images for like $5,000. And he puts a picture up of somebody doing a Hangout. I get an email. And like I didn't risk because I don't do email. So finally, Michelle's going through my emails and says, Mike, there's some guy from Microsoft, and he's pretty pissed. <laughs> and this guy Great. works at Microsoft, and he says, take my picture off the website. So we just took a guy doing a, a Hangout. It was actually some guy from Microsoft, and it's at Microsoft.com. So Ooh. we're pissing people off here today. So let's see. Do we have new pictures of... Sorry, uh, Microsoft, dude. Of, uh, oh, we changed them with me and Andy, and there's AJ, another of AJ there. Okay, cool. Does AJ work for Microsoft? Uh, AJ, yeah, AJ was a guy. He actually works for Microsoft part time. Oh, since AJ Gates, yeah, he's you know he has split personality disorder. Yeah. Andrew Jackson Gates. Andrew Jackson Gates. Okay, who's up next? Brandy. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the lovely and talented. Intermittent. Wait, what's, what was the John Travolta thing? The I can't do the intro now. You're already here. <laughs> okay, Randy. All right. <laughs> All right, let's do the yeah, yeah, intro. Yeah. Amateur. Amateur. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. I don't even know your last name. This <laughs> interminably talented name is Shot. Brandy Sweezy. Brandy Sweezy. Come on in, Brandy. Brandy Sweezy. The initials BS, that's all you got to know. Exactly. Frank, I'll give you a hug. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is beautiful right here. I think that's what, yeah, this is the one that's got to stay there. AJ, AJ wanted this to one to be here, right? Picture now. That's not that a, we'll just, yeah, that's that's not a remotely phallic. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's phallic what you wanted right there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's so funny. We're such good friends. Yeah, you don't friends. even know my last name. I really don't. Well, I do. When you said, it, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's it's easy. Right. In fact, because uh, I, 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 you know, you know, you know Michelle. Right. Brandy's been over the house many times. We've, <laughs> we've gone out to dinner and had uh, had a great time. And um, that I didn't even know what you did <laughs> up until an hour ago. I know. You know, obviously everybody's saying you should have Brandy here. She know she knows uh, webinars and hangouts better than anybody. So I'm saying to you, what do you want to talk about? More webinars? And you're like, no, hangouts. Do you hangouts even know what I do? I'm like, no, <laughs> we're just friends. Yeah, and that's the way it is. Yeah. All right. So tell us about. Let's let's get a little uh, little bio. Let uh, tell us what you do first, okay. and then we'll go back and find out how you get started in all this stuff. Um, yeah, well, mostly I'm known as the Hangout marketing expert. Um, so it's not to be confused with a G plus expert or the really the techie, too much of the techie side of Hangouts. It was really seeing the power of Hangouts when they first came out. So I was really on the, the bleeding edge. I was like, why isn't everybody doing Hangouts? And that's why I'm really excited about Webinar Jam is because the big barrier of entry was people are like, well, wait, it's not like GoToWebinar. We can't track it. There's no analytics. Right. Well, and so I was trying to crack the code on that for yeah. quite some time. And then that's why this is such a great. Yeah. Before that, you know, there, you had to duct tape the system, create the squeeze page, and you know, and and find ways to integrate the autoresponder. And then how do you? You have you can't send out the the messages automatically. You've right. Got to go remind everybody that the webinar until you know until uh, this came together. Right. So um, what what types of uh, success did you see with Hangouts, even without the front end marketing machine that Webinar Jam gave? What what kind of stuff were you seeing that? the positives that were so good with Hangouts that GoToWebinar couldn't provide. You know, I, I say this a lot. It's really the, the psychology of Hangouts is amazing because we had blogging was what brought about that whole transparency and authenticity. Then we moved into teleseminars, so then we had a tonality. Mm -hmm. So then we felt like we were a little bit more connected with you. Then we moved into the GoToWebinar. So now I have a visual and I have your tone or, you know, Frank likes to show his furry chest, yes. you know, like me, and accidentally turn on the video. But th you felt more bonded. Well, then we got into video marketing, which really went through the roof. Mm -hmm. And what happened though is you widen the empathy gap with two shiny polished mm -hmm. videos. So Hangouts really allow you the opportunity to connect with your people one on one, to be face to face. Mm -hmm. It's technology, mm -hmm. so something is going to go wrong, it, it, even Did in this big beautiful studio. Did you hear what happened, you happened to us the first day? <laughs> yeah. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we basically, the very first day, first Hangout live to the world, we're demonstrating uh, Webinar Jam. We're like, hi, everybody. Mike will say, <laughs> All the power in the house just went out for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 450 people there waiting. Oh, God. <laughs> so I had to get back onto a laptop in in a dark room. And we're like, well, it's not quite the way we were going to do this today. But, yeah. But we still got through because we didn't get bounced out of the webinar. 
Right. Well, and that's the beauty of it too. It's you know, it, it humanizes your brand really because it's something's going to go wrong, and you know, like here we are at Marketing Genesis with this awesome studio. Stuff's still going to go wrong, yeah. right? And so it really, people are like, oh, you're like me. Mm -hmm. Shit happens to you too. Sorry, am I supposed to cuss or not? Well, we yeah. have it since it's Google Hangouts. <laughs> yeah, we have a 60 yeah. Second delay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so you really know that stuff is going to um, go wrong, and then it's just in how you handle it going wrong, and then that's what really closes the empathy gap. And then I also think for Hangouts, you know, the whole, like what Frank was talking about, the indoctrination, you know, that it really allows for that to happen much more seamlessly. They really get to know you. We're face to face. Here we are. And they feel like they know you. I mean, you know, when you go to an event, people are like, oh, hey, I saw you at a Hangout. We're like best friends, right? <laughs> Hi, and you are? <laughs> well, yeah, the word Hangout just became such a buzz term that it, it was so personal that even if you weren't one of the 10 people down in the tiles, people felt that they were on the Hangout with you. Absolutely. Because the webcams from the different speakers were automatically popping in, which is, which is some technology that had never been out there before. Right. Uh, I see uh, corporations using it. I see marketers using it. Um, I was just on one the other day with Mark Harris, and, and Captain Lou was, uh, was there, Lori Morgan Ferrero, Alex Mondozian, who likes to hold up these... Little, Those cards. Yeah, the, the yeah, cards. He, like, he wants but, to go all tech, right? Here you go. Here's my little, my little card. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the reason why is you have to fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it was interesting. I was yeah. actually, I'm going to use that one. Yeah. I, I love those ideas. Who are you seeing uh, have, have uh, good results with, uh, with Hangouts? Uh, you know, I think that, well, you can build authority with them. I think that that's a, a great opportunity for people just starting out. I've seen huge sales happen on Hangouts for sure. You know, they're good results for... Results not typical, but like, what do you mean uh, by huge sales? Um, well, I mean, God, this was probably about nine months ago. Um, I know somebody, one of my fairly famous clients did, I don't know, $30,000 on a Hangout and had never done done one before. And it obviously results not typical. Yeah. You know, huge list, great following, yeah. that kind yeah. of stuff, right? Well, I did one with Jordan Belfort. Did you really? Yeah, January 11th, the, the, the real Wolf of Wall Street. He's one of my clients. Yeah. Jack, that was just a couple of months ago. In January, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we know a lot about Jordan, obviously, from Wolf of Wall Street. Right. And Mike Keenings is talking with him, and uh, many people in this room here are, are, are know Jordan. So, what? So, talk to us about that, Jordan. Jordan Belford. Had he ever done a hangout before? No, that was his first, and I think his only hangout. I mean, he liked it, you know, but he's traveling so much with the launch of the movie and stuff. But he was really trying to connect with his audience. Because that was during the launch of his movie. It was at the end. The movie launched on December twenty fifth. So, you know, kind of. You know, on the tail of that, but it was just releasing in Europe mm -hmm. the following week. So we did one on January 11th, was when we did that one, mm -hmm. and he just answered questions. So it was and, very and much so like so. There was live, uh, live Q and A. Right. And uh, and so what was he talking about? Is uh, about straight line persuasion. Straight line persuasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's keep it straight. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, that was really he really wanted to connect with his audience and answer questions. You know, and he was very polarizing in the marketplace at that time. So it was really a great opportunity for people to mm -hmm. ask questions and directly interact with him. And so people felt more bonded to him rather than less. How many people showed up for that? Uh, live, we had 400. This is 48 hours notice. They contacted me on Wednesday and we did it on Friday. Mm -hmm. And they so only, they contacted you. Yeah, yeah. And then um, they only mailed to a certain portion of their list because mm -hmm. it was the first one. And so 400 live, but after that, over 40,000 views. It was 30,000 30, views within a week. Is that on YouTube? Yes. So people can uh, can search Brandy Sweezy, Jordan Belfort. No, I won't have my name in there. It's Jordan oh, no. Belfort. You'll see me on it. But Jordan Belfort Hangouts. Right. Okay. Jordan Belfort, the, the Wolf of Wall Street Live or something live, like that. Live, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's... Uh, that's Absolutely incredible. That's a, that's a pretty big. Uh, oh yeah, pretty yeah. Big I was idea. like, especially when the, the movie was going. Uh, yeah, at that time. it was very exciting. So, um, w with um, with Hangouts and the fact that you can push PowerPoint presentations, what type of balance do you feel is important with using the webcam in the face and using the uh, the PowerPoints? Because because we did one uh, with uh, Sean Wander and uh, Mitch. Um, why am I forgetting Mitch's last name? Mitch German. And the first one we we bombed with, we did way too much on the PowerPoint. And people wrote back because they heard the word hangout in it and said, we thought it was going to be more interactive. And what they meant by interactive was seeing more of our face. So the next one we did, we were using a lot of camera. And every single time we popped out to create a, um, a counterpoint or to recap something somebody said, we popped out of the PowerPoint and went back to the face. And the we did very very well uh, on that. That campaign 
not typical, did 30,000, and the replay did another 40,000. So uh, I just get a break. <laughs> <frank. laughs> yeah, still not typical. <laughs> still not typical. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and, and with the first one, we, we flopped completely just by driving completely on a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, I think that a lot of people are still kind of caught up in trying to get it to replace GoToWebinar. And it's a totally different psychology. It is really much very about being one-on-one -on -one with people. And so don't be so slide dependent. You know, you got to go ahead and it, it's not called go-to hangout. Right. You know right. what I mean? So you have the opportunity to engage with your people. And I think that, you know, I say less than 20%. And then in hangouts, uh, the screen share can be a little clunky. So sometimes you'll do the screen share and it won't let you go back off the screen share. That's what happened to Frank. Yeah, and it's very clunky. So what I like to do is I use the hangout toolbox, mm -hmm. which allows you to have custom overlays. Mm -hmm. And then I just pop up different. If you, if you have to have a visual, then you pop up that visual, but it's very seamless that yes. way. It's more of a pattern interrupt than it is to be so slide dependent. Because you, as we know, like as speakers, when you're too slide dependent, people are just looking at your slides and they're not listening to you. Like what he was talking about, less than 20% of they're not hearing what you're saying. So I'm going to try a Frank Kern right now. Uh, let's see. And as you know, um, <laughs> uh, Google, uh, let's try this again. As you know, Webinar Jam also allows you to use all of the other plugins from Google Hangouts. So you'd still be able to use the Hangout Toolbox options right. and be able to show your screen. Right. So now that you can do that, plus all the features of Webinar Jam, it would be a great time to enroll today. <laughs> yes, it is a great time to enroll today. Yeah, I said, you know, like I said in the beginning, we were like kind of just cutting and pasting trying to get that. And so that's why it's been, the response obviously has been so huge for Webinar Jam is that these were the, the features that people were looking for. You know, a lot of people don't have the capacity to try to piecemeal it together and they want the analytics and they want to know how many viewers and what the drop off rate is. And, and, you know, and I think that that's, to me, that's a really powerful part of Webinar Jam, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it, the sales today, Brandy, are just absolutely through the roof. So here's where we were. So let, actually, I could probably even share my screen, right? Yeah. Dave, am I blocked out? Can we allow me to share my <laughs> all screen? All the producers are gone. The, the producers, <laughs> the producers are, are like, they're, all, they're uh, over Mike, at happy hour Mike now. <laughs> Mike looks like he's okay yeah. right now. They're taking pictures with Frank. Well, well keep me <laughs> muted, but I want to be able to show my screen. This is my browser here. Are we seeing my screen? This is such an awesome setup. I just have to say that. I'll post okay. more pictures on my Facebook wall. So this my is an awesome I'm gonna, setup. I'm going to zoom in. So this, this is our sales for today, as we see here. Uh, when we started the, the live hangout before Frank joined, we were at 582,000. That was the last time I hit the, the refresh button. So we're going to refresh, and that 582 is now at $675,000. So while Frank was sitting in this chair, we did $100,000 in sales for Webinar Jam. So that's, we can go back to uh, us here. Every I have to. Right that's correct. <laughs> that's awesome. Let me, uh, do I have to stop sharing my screen or I'm good? I bet you said okay, so, okay, so we're back. So, <laughs> so we're back. back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so people are absolutely loving the fact that they don't have to pay $4.99 a month anymore because we know webinars are cool. Right. And GoToWebinar did a great job. Really, I think. We, we're not poo-pooing GoToWebinar, right. other than the fact that it's like, come on, 1,000 people maximum. Right. Today, uh, President Obama couldn't have, done, uh, couldn't have done anything close to it. They just couldn't handle it. It's old technology. This uses the backbone of Google. Right. And we created the front end for it, which was what Hangouts were missing. Right. At a one-time price today, which ends in about six hours or whatever the case is, for 297 bucks, new features coming all the time. It's uh, it's a must have solution. It is absolutely yeah. You got to you, like you'd be foolish to not jump on it because I mean, I think that that's you know for you guys the barrier is the thousand uh, dollar the thousand person cap off. But yeah. for the average entrepreneur, it's not even the thousand dollars. It's five hundred a month. That's that's a hit for the average entrepreneur. Yeah, and, you know? and, and even if they go down to the five hundred uh, people, let's say they can only get. Uh, they say, oh, I'll probably get more than 500, which is okay. Um, even for me to get over 500 sometimes is difficult. It's still, I think, 399 a month or two. Or it's, up there. It's, it's, a, it's a month. Yeah. And the other thing with that is it used to happen to me all the time. Rosalie would come up to me. Every, we would always try to cut expenses. And she, it would come up every single time in a meeting. What's this go to webinar we're spending 499 a month for? It's like, are we really paying them that much? And it's like, do you want me to cancel it? And then it'd be like, 
Yeah, find out if we can cancel if we can get back on because I haven't done a webinar in, in, in a few months and I hated having to pay $500 a month. I could get myself a Lexus and leave it in my friend's garage and that gives you the same effect of paying $500 a month and not being able to use something. It just it just doesn't make sense. The other thing I didn't like about GoToWebinar a lot too is the like your average end user, because I'm always thinking about what's my end user's experience. That's really the goal. And so when you have to go to a GoToWebinar and they have to download something, I wonder how much business we've lost from the people that are like, I'm not downloading anything. I don't know what that's going to do. What used to happen with me on a Mac is when I would download that thing, it would get lost like behind the browser and I would just be sitting there like reading their gray notice and I'd be like and then until I moved my browser over I saw that thing in the background that I had to click and you have to download it again every time I had like seven versions of it on, on my computer right. and, uh, and and people don't like to download things. No like I think the average person doesn't like to download for us we'll be like okay fine 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 but the I think the average person I'd be curious I'm sure there's some stats out there someplace about how many sales or you know engagement was lost in that process. I have no idea I, I wouldn't don't. be surprised if it's 10 percent yeah uh, five to ten percent of the people which is which is a lot yes you know. agreed. Uh, we shouldn't have to give up anything with webinar jam they simply get a link it creates the, the page for them with a conference room with the video embed already in right. and it has the polls, the surveys and the ability. So th let me ask you this, you're doing Hangouts, right? Um, you've got asked the question, how do I put a link in at the end? Oh yeah. That I, was, right? You I, had yes. to go out and get a third party software like, like Chatroll which yeah. is not free right? Um, or you had to um, use like Facebook or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one of my, I teach from my mistakes. Another, I, I try to do a timed call to action button. Mm -hmm. And so I had it timed at like the 45 minute mark for the, the buy my stuff mm -hmm. button to come up. Well, people would refresh it to, to do the comments. So they kept on losing the button. Right. <laughs> and so I kept on losing those sales. That happened once. I didn't, I didn't have to have that happen more than one time. And now you'll <laughs> never have to worry exactly, about that. Exactly. Yeah. As you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> today, yeah. today only. Yeah. yeah um, so what happened, I was looking, um, Andy and I were doing the bossathons for Video Genesis back in July, just to talk about how quick something can come to the market. We had the idea in July, we went uh, live in, in uh, December internally to our, our, uh, our customers. And um, we were trying to find a way to do these hangouts and push the button. I was like, oh, this guy's got a WordPress plugin, or there's this other thing out there that does it. And it was like, yeah, but what about, what about the chat? No, you still need this. And I. I got with Hector and I said, Hector, here's what we need. This basically a browser that puts a chat here. We can do poll surveys, push buttons and links, embed the video, let it resize depending on the size of the person's screen, and let's just create the front end pages and then next thing you know, the, it got a little more intricate. Oh, we could do this, we could do this. That, that happened, uh, let's say, like the end of July when we were doing those, those uh, bossathons. So call it August 1st and August, September, October, November, uh, December 15th. So four and a half months later, Webinar Jam uh, was born. And we, we were excited to do Genesis Labs. Yeah, let's do Webinar Jam and then we're going to move into some other things. And we sent an email out to our list for Webinar Jam. And we have a, a good list and we're happy to do, if it's a good email, $10,000 for, for uh, the promotion. I woke up and we saw that we did $86,000 and we were like, oh my goodness, we're onto something. People, there was a pain out there and, and then it hit us. We were like, why is this any surprise? People love Google Hangouts and they're all saying, like Frank, I, I don't know, but the green thing just showed up on me and then, or um, how, how do you get people to register? Does it automatically invite them? And they didn't want to pay $4.99 a month. We simply took on, and we can go uh, over, uh, over to oh, this page Oh, we're taking here. AJ down? <laughs> we, uh, Sassy, well, can we punch into the boss vision here? Say goodbye to AJ. We simply took what was missing out of this column, especially the ridiculous price, right. got rid of that, and what was missing out of the Google Hangouts column here with uh, the stuff that you couldn't do, like have high converting registration pages and have your autoresponder integration and do reminder emails. Uh, send SMX uh, text messages, those different types of things. And we simply created a platform that did both and then we blew them away with the price and that's why we're, we're seeing such, such success with it. So where are you going to go now with, with Hangouts and Webinar Jam? 
Uh, well, I'm going to keep on doing exactly what okay. I've been doing, right? I have Hangouts for Business Producers Academy, so I teach people how to produce shows because uh, that's really what I was doing in the beginning was quote-unquote producer. Where, that's where we had a problem that we didn't anticipate. So all of our videos, all of our trainings, everything that we did was based on how to set up Webinar Jam, get people to do registration pages, and basically what happens once you click that link. What we weren't ready for, and we can't believe we, we, we didn't even look into it, was, all right, how do I do a Hangout? Because on the back, essentially you're doing a Hangout. Right. And we realized, wow, you know what, we, don't have, we didn't teach people how to do anything about uh, the toolbox, the lower thirds, what are actual what the actual hangout dashboard is. So we went on a scramble. So that that's uh, so hopefully the more customers <laughs> and now you we get, know that I know how to do that. <laughs> they can go seek you out yeah. and, and find out how to do uh, how to how to learn how to do great hangouts where they can get the, the best camera quality and get their guests in. That's the biggest complaint. People in. are always freaking that they can't get their guests in. Mm -hmm. Like that's the number one barrier of it. They're like, oh my God, my phone will blow up. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do a hangout. I can't get my guests on. Mm -hmm. It says just invite people. Why aren't they coming in? Yeah, well, <laughs> even when the guy is on Skype, yeah. I, uh, we used to have that problem. Yeah. Webinar Jam handles that for you. <laughs> Automatically sends them a link. But w w without that, you used to have to uh, tell them, well, go, go, to, go to your Gmail. I don't see it. All right, go to the little plus thing up at the top, and you go see to that. The bell. Look for the notification on the bell, and, and, and sometimes you know, they didn't know how to find it. And, the, and they're live, right? right. Now it's, uh, it's, it's 5 p.m., you're live, and you're telling people, hold on just a minute, we're waiting for that other person to come in. I have them on Skype. Yep. They'll be here any minute. And then yeah. six minutes later, you're blink. It's a, yeah, it it, yeah. that's like probably the biggest because you're not in control of your end user's notification. Mm -hmm. So of course you guys have figured out the easy way. You know, I'm all about making it simple. Let's get simple to the point and get you up and running as quick as possible. Yeah. You know, and then I train a lot of people on how to do like the producers' roles behind the scenes. That's, and that's that's the important thing. You can sell your service as a producer. I mean, I literally pulled that term out of my butt, and so I was like, hang out. For sell your sell your services as a producer for. Hangouts or jam sessions, webinar jam sessions. Yeah. And here's why. When I'm on and there are multiple people on, I don't want to be looking down, down. at my screen right. and as I'm talking to you, because this is the type of verbiage that you get. So uh, on uh, Friday, uh, just a second, on Friday, and, and you're doing this um and ah nonsense while you're trying to lock out a presenter, share their screen, mute them, all these different things. Look at the chat roll. And as you see, what we do here with Dave allows us to be the talent, and I right. can just say to the producer, "Hey, uh, Dave, uh, you know, I'm just making this up, so you don't have to pay attention. Can you, find, <laughs> can, can you look in the chat room and find a, find a, a question and send it to me over here? So, because when the chat roll is moving too fast, exactly, the presenter starts doing this. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Jim asked a question. Uh, how do I get a refund? And then the question. Uh, and it's always long. the wrong question. Yeah, right? it's always the yeah. question. Like, yeah, I put a refund in picked. an hour ago. I haven't given. Uh, uh, go to our help. To, you know. <laughs> yeah. But if you can get a producer to feed you the right questions, Absolutely. like Frank, why is your shirt pink? Yeah. You know, think, you know, good questions. <laughs> Those are very important questions. You know. really yeah. Good questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great use of your time. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, I thought I, like never who knew that was going to be a service, and that's why you know I wow, train yeah. people to do that and offer it as a service and make money to do it. Yeah, I wonder if, if Webinar Gem should start a community like that. For, Absolutely. For uh, for people that we could list as um, as these producers, right? Uh, and then when somebody's hiring, they could hire them for whatever dollars per hour, right? And uh, and handle these things. People that are certified. That's what I think. That's what I did with my producers academy is I moved them into elite producers. So those are the people that I refer that I won't do producing for. And then same yeah, thing I think people. with the software, you know, you get somebody really trained on the software, it's going to cut down on your support time and they're making money. So they sell their service one time, they've made back their purchase. Can a producer product. also do something like, hey, for an extra $100? Because look, if we're going to do a webinar and it's a difference between bombing and making $200 or 2000 or 2000 or 20000 if the producer were to say, uh, for an extra two hundred fifty dollars, or one fifty, or whatever, um, I will. We can do a one-on-one -on -one hangout presentation, and in sixty minutes, I will make you an expert on everything about Webinar Jam and Google Hangouts. That when you get on, you know that you won't have to have that anxiety. That look, I remember my first hangout. I was testing it. I'm seeing something that says broadcast. Like I'm literally putting my hand over like this because I thought every one of my followers 
were suddenly going to see me in their stream. And then I saw the video in my stream, and I was like, does everybody see this? And then, yeah. you know, I'm Googling, it's like, okay. Only... Which is a nightmare. If you yeah. Google any of the help, it's like, oh, just push this button, and this happens. Has that ever happened for you? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't get the answers. It just doesn't work that <laughs> way. No, so, so a producer is the person that is going to be able to give, give the peace of mind to the person doing their jam session, is what we call okay, their yeah. hangout, yeah, to, uh, to worry not about the technology, do a great presentation, and also have somebody there handling the stuff behind the scenes, like the chat, the surveys, pushing the button, and be able to just say things like, Sassy, why don't we push that button now and put yeah. the link up there while you're continuing to talk with the other people on the hangout session. Right. I mean, that's the ideal situation, like, like what we did here. You know, we, we're just showing up and we're having fun, and I think that that's what makes it a lot of fun. Because I think when people try to do it all themselves, they are stressed out. They're trying to figure out where the button is, and they pick the wrong question, and they're, you know, trying to get all the moving parts in at one time, and it's just, and be, you know, charismatic and, and fun. Jam sessions and hangouts are going to give you better interactivity than go to webinar. And that reason, in my opinion, better conversions. Yep. It was easier with GoToWebinar in the fact that all there was was a PowerPoint presentation. Right. You were hidden behind a microphone and you would hit the space bar and move all the way through. Now, you can bring people into Hangouts in remote locations, have them at the bottom of the screen, automatically have the microphone. Google picks up their voice and shows their picture and all these different right. things. But not everybody knows that you can lock into one person's screen. So when we were doing a presentation with Mitch the other day, he was demonstrating the software. I click, put a blue circle over him so that his screen would be locked because sometimes what happens is somebody will just go to their wife or something, put the kids to bed and I'll be back in a minute. And the next thing you know, their screen shows up and you're hearing them going, you know, and the demo, the demo presentation goes away. So yeah. being able to know all these features that, that Hangouts can do is great. And then also having the producer being able to do that. Do that no, for you. That takes a, you, a lot of ease off of you. That makes you, and that makes you much more engaging on camera. If you're much more relaxed, if you're stressed out, it comes across. If you're having fun and you're just chit chatting, then I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> when we lost power and I came back, the first five minutes of that <laughs> webinar with me here, I, I, in my head, I'm, I'm like, oh my god, this is the first presentation for, for webinar jam. I'm starting to sweat, and you know, I'm, I'm there's this voice talking to me as I'm trying to get positive comments out, you know. Yeah. Uh, you could only imagine oh, yeah. you know, what, I, what I'm thinking. I've had the, well, my worst hangouts have resulted in my highest paying clients. You know, I've had my backdrop fall on my head. I've had the whole thing crash. I've had stuff go way wrong on my hangouts. But I think, again, the way that you recover and the more that you're engaged with your people, the more likely they are. Yeah. So they can learn everything from you. Yeah. How to get lighting on, the, the right type of lighting on their face so that right. they don't have the bags under their eyes. Right. And uh, uh, all these different things that are going to make their presentations better because whether or not you're doing training or you're selling or you're doing a coaching program everything is currency right because if you're training and you look shabby yep. then your currency goes down and you're, they're not going to continue to want to learn from you uh, if they're if they bought an eight-week coaching program and things are your microphone is sounding like this, and right. you know your the camera is looking up at you from here. People always do the it's look down thing. That's my biggest my biggest yeah. pet peeve this is when thing, they do right? hangouts. They're always like in their pajamas, looking down. The psychology yeah. of looking down on somebody. Please don't do that. I've Raise all, the camera. I've <laughs> even taken like um, oh, I'd go to rig my stuff. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I like. If I'll you get a rig see, my I, stuff. I like to have it about four inches above, I so it's looking down here, and it also gets rid of exactly. My well, my vanity dictates that you have to have it this way. Exactly. So. How do people learn more about you? Where do, where do they go to learn more about you and the, the, the trainings uh, and services that you do for, for Hangouts and producers? Uh, hangoutsforbusiness.com is all of the Hangout training. Hangouts for business. For business. Com. Yeah. Okay. Business. <laughs> for business. For business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hangoutsforbusiness.com or brandysweezy.com. Brandysweezy.com. Yeah. Brandy, we want to thank you so much hey, for thank you coming so much. down. I see your. Your BFF Michelle there. <laughs> She's got there food for, for me. You. She's always feeding me. Yeah. Have you even seen her since we got engaged? <laughs> yes, I have seen you since we got engaged. But you guys were like some, a bunch of different. Oh, you were traveling a little bit after that. Yeah. Yeah, we've been in and out. Yeah, because we were at Stingray. Right? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, that was Stingray. Great. I don't. You don't have never heard of that place. <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> it's all about being authentic on air, people. Darn it. That's it. That's it. Well, right. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. Hug, hug. Right. Thank you. So, a uh, little uh, commercial break here. We're gonna get. Mario Brown. I call him Mario Purple because it's just a better, accurate description of him. Uh, Mario Brown will be joining us in just a few minutes while we get his uh, microphone uh, set up. So 
I'm going to take this opportunity now to share my screen one more time, Dave. Let's, uh, let's take a look and see what happened in the last 10 minutes here. Do a screen share of my browser. Do the whole desktop. Why not? All right. Is that my browser showing? Oh, that was that was that face up look horrible thing that just happened. All right. So my browser's showing. So we're at 675,000 in sales. Let's see how many of you guys here on this uh, jam session have purchased. Uh, we had. 2,541 sales today alone. We hit that refresh button. We go from 675,000 to 692,000 in just 10 minutes. What is that? Uh, 17,000? 1,000 a minute. Yeah. And uh, there you go, guys. So you can see that um, sales for Webinar Jam are completely going through the roof today, obviously, because the price ends today. And we know that according to this screen on the boss vision here, SAS, right? right? We have exactly nine hours, uh, nine hours, eight minutes left between before the sale ends for good. After that, the price goes up. So you know you're going to be doing webinars. Your choice is pay more with us later or pay go to webinar 499 bucks a month. Or you can buy it now like the other uh, let's see. Let's see our all-time sales. You don't have to go into my screen here. I just want to uh, take a look here. Let's see. Webinar Jam all-time. How are we doing, Mario? Almost, almost ready? Okay. We have 8,944. So by the time this broadcast ends, 9,000 people doing Jam sessions with Webinar Jam. Why not you? One of the cool thing we just added with Webinar Jam. You know when you do a jam session, it says, Sassy, I'm going to look at, over at this camera just to be cool. It says that uh, because you're buying with Deal Guardian, that's who we sell with, it automatically creates you an affiliate account for Webinar Jam when you buy the product. And then when you use the product, at the bottom it says powered by Webinar Jam. Very small little branding at the bottom. When people click on that, it opens up in a new window, and it pays you just to use the service. Now, GoToWebinar doesn't do that. And uh, as you're using the service, that little hotmail effect for us, you and the other 9,000 people and other people buying out there doing webinars, jam sessions, hangouts, whatever you want to call it, you'll actually be branding with your own affiliate link every time you use it. Just absolutely phenomenal. So our next guest is going to be a very dear friend of mine, named Mario Brown. I had the opportunity to speak at his event with the incredible Frank Kern and Andy Jenkins. Uh, he doesn't know who he is because I think he was born in North Carolina, raised in, uh, uh, raised in Germany, and your mother is... German. German. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. Come on in. Mario Brown, everybody. Let's hit, yeah, let's hit that applause button hey, on uh, the Google doing? Hangouts. What's happening? What, do we got? what does it say here? I make it make look it easy. Look easy. Uh, our show sponsored today by Nike. <laughs> Nike. Nike. You make it look easy. What I do. You, what have you been up to? Um, you know, we are expecting. So actually, I don't That's know right. what the other people talked about. I was in the kitchen and just talking about babies and things like Where that. Where did you find out that you were expecting? We found out on the cruise, actually. On the marketer's, on the marketer's cruise. cruise. That was a loaded yeah. question. Yeah. Yes, yes. It was great. Um, I remember when we drove to the cruise, actually, and we stopped at the CVS. Got the test and on the ship right away found out that she's pregnant. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's uh, that was incredible news. Yeah, yeah. So that's keeping us busy. You know, checking hospitals and things like that. Do um, you have a a, a week, a month uh, delivery date? Yeah, um, delivery date is September 16th. So right now we're like 13 wow. weeks in, and uh, yeah. Wow. You know, Maria is also watching. She just texted me, all excited. Hey, hi there. Hey, Maria. How are and um, yeah, that's what I'm up to. Marketing-wise, we have an event coming just like last year, first weekend in May. And um, where's that going to be at? Most likely in Los Angeles this time. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is there a web page yet for that? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, so we can't plug it. No, no. You no, can check it out at MarioBrown.net. MarioBrown.net. Yes. Yeah, that stupid other guy got the .com on you. Uh, I actually grabbed it a month ago. Oh, it was right. taken, and a month ago he 
forgot to expand, so I grabbed oh, it. Oh, so you got the dot com. I got the guy. I have it now, but there's no stuff. But on you, it yet. you just got to do a redirect. Exactly. So MarioBrown.net, we can find out more yeah. about, about the event. And thanks for coming down today. Absolutely. We, we texted up Mario literally like at 1.30 or 2.30 yeah. and said, hey, we're doing a show. Come on down. So webinars in your business. Yeah. Talk, talk about how you've used it. I do a lot of them. First of all, I think there's Frank, no... you leaving? I'm here. You is B. Bye -bye. Take care. Thanks for everything, Frank. Great Take seeing care. you. See you on the golf course. Working hard. Hello. Um, yeah, I use them a lot. I think there's no better way to sell, um, you know, maybe the best way is one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. and then from stage, but online, I think webinars is just like um, straightforward, the best way to sell um, one-to-many. Mm -hmm. You know, you can teach thousands of people at the same time and it's just ultimate leverage. Yeah, have you used it for coaching? Yes, I, yeah, quite a bit actually. Uh, because I know you, you have some pretty good coaching programs. Like, yeah. yeah. So do you... Um, is, is it an integral part of your coaching? Like, uh, like, uh, do you meet with them at a like live uh, weekly? Like, was it an eight-week thing, or do, mm -hmm. you, do you have like an ongoing we we meet once a month type of uh, coaching program? It's like bi-weekly. Mm -hmm. um, so I use webinars to sell the coaching, and then once people are in the program, I basically have um, I use it as an educational tool. Mm -hmm. And what's nice with um, you know webinar jam and with hangouts is that if you have uh, like eight to ten people, mm -hmm. it's really cool, the, the interaction, because now it's like an in-person mastermind, but still everyone can stay at home. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, right. it's so personal and so intimate, and that way, your coaching members, it feels more like a family to them. And the more that you can create that feeling of family, the more they feel integrated into your, in your coaching program. Yeah, we have, uh, we're going to be going a lot of, over a lot of these features for you guys in, uh, in our uh, trainings. We're going to be doing live training Every single day, there's new things called Uber Conference mm -hmm. um, for Hangouts, which allows you to have a telephone number to have people call in. Because nice. sometimes somebody wants to, you know, call in like they do on GoToWebinar and ask a question, but maybe they don't want their face on camera. Uber Uber Conference for Hangouts is mm -hmm. a free plug plug in, and it works to allow us to give people a number to dial in okay. with their questions, so we can say, if you have a question and you want to talk to us live, call this number. Nice. Um, we can get multiple numbers. Uh, we're, we're looking to uh, do a feature where in the chat session we can ask people, this isn't out yet, but we're hoping in 30 days, they ask a, a question, but they can also raise their hand, and then they go into a raise your hand queue, mm -hmm. and then we'll see a stack of people with their hand raised, and we'll, we can say something like, okay, Brandy, uh, we see you have a question, get ready, we're going to invite you into the hangout, yep. your camera is going to go on, uh, and then boom, we can bring them right in, they can ask live questions, or we could give them a number to call. So some of the questions we're getting in our support desk mm -hmm. is, how do we have that feature where people can dial in like they do with GoToWebinar? Uber Conference helps uh, does that. It's a free plug-in, and we're also going to be building features like that into uh, because we want to make sure that we have we have everything yep. that they have uh, and and do it even easier for everybody. I love it, and you know, for me with webinars, it's all about um, engagement. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about the chat feature because the reason why I stayed away from Google Hangouts, I actually did just one in my life, was that um, the buffer. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask a question and then it takes time till they can respond. But you know, if you have a chat box that is real time, it's just like it's so powerful because it's all about engagement. You know, I'm, the chat box is real time, correct? Yeah. Yes, and it's it's awesome. You know, for me, it's all about micro commitments. Like if you want to sell at the end of your webinar. The more yeses you can get along the way, right. but they have to be instant. You have yes. to ask a question, get right away engagement, and then at the end, if you had a lot of micro commitments along the way, you have a higher chance to get the big yes exactly. for the coaching offer. Yeah. Now, just just for full transparency, um, Google's technology currently, as uh, as we as we are here now, we're hoping that they get. Oh, little power failure. Are we still live? I lost the monitor here. We did have a little flicker. See what happens, guys. We're still live. Good. Um, uh, Google Google does have a 30 to 45 yep. second delay. So if I were to say to somebody right now, hey, ask a question for Mario, I know that they're not going to see it for 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'll continue to to talk with you, and then the questions come in as yep. soon as they hear it there. So the chat section's happening live yeah. on the net. But you, so when you're doing your presentation, guys, you want to know that um, because of Google's Hangouts uh, technology, broadcasting to... Uh, uh, into basically YouTube technology called Hangouts on Air. Uh, everything that you're doing, everybody's seeing about 30 to 45 seconds later. Now, they don't know the difference. To them, it's live. It's just like when you're watching the news 
and the news is on a seven to fifteen second delay yep. uh, to handle, uh, you know, if the newscaster ab- 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 interruptions, yeah, really crazy, uh, they can bleep it out. You know, you get a weird guest like Frank Kern on or something. <laughs> you know, that's why we get, we needed sixty seconds for Frank. So. Uh, but you never know that the news is on delay because yep. it's, it's real time to you. Anybody watching your presentation is real time. The only thing that you want to know is that when you ask a question for, hey, where is everybody from, you know that your answer is going to come in about 30 seconds. So you say something like, hey, uh, let everybody in a, know, let me know where you're from. In the meantime, let me tell you what's going to be going on today. And as you tell them what's going on, then you see, oh, here we are, New York, Kansas, and then it'll start flying in. Just got to be ready for that. And hopefully... That uh, Google will uh, get rid of that delay. This talks about yep. Google's forums that it may be coming. We're excited as as everybody else for it, but uh, nothing can be done on Google Hangouts to get rid of that delay. As well. I know, and I picked up Webinar Gem, you know, the moment when it came out because I saw um, you doing it. I saw Tom Beal mm-hmm. on one, and I saw the registration form, and I was like, wow! Now you have the power of yeah. Google Hangouts, but in combination with all the marketing. Um, Strategies like you know sign up people, the registration form, email follow up, and Our all these form features. Converted at sixty four percent. I mean, there you uh, go. So, so they're what they call that flat design. Yep. You know, it's all that you know. You get away from the web two point They don't even say that anymore. It's all that flat design that iOS and Windows you know uh, came out with. So our registration pages work great. We're talking with um, lead pages. They yep. got an SDK from us so that we could use their pages. We're working with Megaphone, the Kajabi guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yes, we do see a lot of questions coming into our help desk. Do you do this? Do you do that? And um, we've actually had a couple of refunds where people say, "Oh, until you get lead pages, then you know." I'll, uh-huh. and my thing is like, "Wow, it's two ninety seven for life. It does all these things. We're going to be adding all these features. We're around for a week. Why would you want to come back and pay two ninety seven a year when you can pay two ninety seven for life? Just you tell us what you want. We'll build it into the system." Yeah. And, uh, so so. Um, very, very, uh, very interesting how people are excited about lead pages and megaphone and all these landing page software out there. So we're going to be working with with all of them. We're excited about what's the. <laughs> I love we, it. We had no idea Webinar Jam was gonna was gonna take off uh, like this. We're blown away. Blown I love away. it, man. I love it. Congrats. And I think you know people just see now the power of um, webinars. And if you think about Obama and the Dalai Lama doing the Hangouts, mm-hmm. and now you bring the marketing to it for us. Online marketers, online entrepreneurs, I think it's just a, a perfect match what you created. And that's, I think, why everyone jumps on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. In fact, after you, we have Obama. Uh, he'll be joining us for a live uh, hangout. <laughs> uh, Michelle can make it. And the Dalai Lama will be on together. I'm going to introduce him. They never met There you go. Yet, absolutely. Not happening, folks. Just kidding. Mario Brown is the superstar we end the, the, the show with today. So um, when, you do, when you do webinar presentations yeah. for sale, um, what what is what is your formula in terms of um, what you teach and how you transition yeah. in, into a pitch? There's a couple of things that I do. You know, Frank talked a lot about them um, indoctrination, mm-hmm. and um, I do it kind of the same way. I just don't call it the same thing. I call it more positioning. And for me, it's all about. But it's key key for you to make sure that from the time yeah. that they register, that that you get them excited. To oh get yeah. Them on. Because the, the registration page can only do so much, and it should only do so much. Yeah. If you sell them too much, the, the registration rate goes down. So you you give them simple bullets. Yep. To get them to register, and now you really sell them. Yeah. So so you call it positioning. Positioning, yeah, and it starts with me even almost before the registration. Mm-hmm. So when someone clicks on my um, Facebook ad, for example, mm-hmm. for me it's all about congruency. So what I mean by that is, um, if, if I run Facebook ads, you know, a lot of people who don't know me yet, they might click on it and they see my name on there. So I make sure that the image that they see on the Facebook ad is kind of the same color that I have on the landing page. And then also I repeat my name on the landing page. So it's like, okay, they see me on the Facebook ad, now they see me on the registration page. Advertising, they, they call that scenting. Exactly. What, what they found is like when, uh, when CarMax would do a commercial, and they had like, uh, or let's say the pro- progressive girl. Yep. She's like, you know, the progressive girl in her little white outfit. That they found when they had a campaign, and they uh, and they said, so go to progressive.com forward slash winter event or whatever. Mm-hmm. That when they went there, they had her in the same studio wearing the same clothes. There you go. As opposed to just a generic uh, progressive ad saying save money on your car insurance. That that had a dramatic effect on on the conversions. There uh, you on go. The page. So I, I use that, and then um, once they register in the welcome email or in the thank you email, again, hey, it's me, Mario, and then I go into a little bit of a story. 
So I keep it all the way congruent till the actual webinar happens. So I keep it, you know, actually this shirt that I'm wearing right now when I promoted my event last year, I was always wearing it. So I'm also, you know, kind of framing people and getting them to know that outfit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in future videos, I'm going to do the same. So it starts with the congruency before they even come on the webinar. And then for the actual webinar, when you ask me about the formula, yeah. I mean, in, in you know, the, the short version would be that you start, you know, the usual, a little bit of an introduction. I'm all about connecting with people. Mm -hmm. So I, and not everyone is comfortable with that, but I share my personal story and I, you know. Um, the, I think that's important. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, when when uh, I w we were doing something for one of our other products and we were doing it live the other day on yep. a jam session and we, there was a guy that skimmed through his story. Basically, like, you know, he was like, yeah, you know, so I don't like to talk about it because, you know, at that time uh, I had just had a baby and I, and I was like, wait, stop. That is, that is everything. Yep. And, like, uh, when we got it out of him, he started crying. He didn't even, like, realize, like, the reason why he had never succeeded online in marketing was until he had a baby that when the baby was born and he was mm -hmm. living, like, basically in the projects, he said, I could be poor and try to make marketing work. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. And if I'm married, well, you know, my wife's an adult. She can take care of herself. We'll figure something out. Yep. When he realized that he had a baby and he said, I can no longer raise a baby under these conditions, as Tony Robbins says, either inspiration or desperation, yep. you know, that kicked in so hard. And mm -hmm. I told him, I said, you can't just assume and he does Facebook marketing, mm -hmm. that, that people are going to be interested in what you have to say because everybody's making that same promise. Everybody's, you know, yeah, Facebook advertising, yeah, but what, what makes you real? Yeah. Why should I listen to you? Where do I identify with you? Where do I come up to you in an event and say, Mario, that story that you said about your mom and all that, yep. where, you know, I'm, when I saw your video, yeah. I thought I knew you until I saw that video and that's, uh, that was a very touching video for me, you know, you tell, telling your your story like that, and I think that when people get to know you like that, mm -hmm. they'll be customers for life as long as you treat them well and treat them honest. Yeah, I think so too. And talking about the indoctrination again, um, that video, often what I do is after someone registers for the webinar, I'll actually send them in my email to that video before they even come on the webinar. Mm -hmm. Because talk about positioning again. Yeah. They learn my story that on the video. video. That same video. If, they, if somebody was going to go to YouTube after we're done here today and wants to see that video so they can see yeah. how you tell a story, because uh, you shared some painful things. Yeah. You know, a lot of things that you probably thought you'd never share with people. Exactly. Yeah, some stuff that we were probably embarrassed about. Exactly. You know, I, I, I went through those same things in my life, and then you realize, like, wow, being transparent and true, yeah. it tells my struggle. It says I'm human, and I've conquered. Exactly. You know? uh, if they were to search in YouTube, uh, Mario Brown, what would they search? Um, Mario Brown documentary. Mario Brown documentary. Then they can see it. Uh, I, I guarantee you guys, when, when you see that, if uh, many of you that are Mario's customers, you'll know why. Um, but those that have never heard of Mario or have heard of him but didn't know the story, you're going to be connected with him uh, for life. There's a reason why there are many, many people here in San Diego, and Mario's the one uh, you know, sitting in this chair you know, today because, uh, because he's a real person, and I know where, where you came from. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. So that's what I do, and that video, you know, because one thing with webinars that people have to keep in mind from the moment when someone registers, if uh, four or five days later the actual webinar happens, um, sometimes they can cool off a little bit. So they're excited the moment they register, but then you have an extra four or five days, so that's where you want to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And that's when I send them that video, maybe a free bonus, so they go like, wow, this guy's over-delivering, let's make sure I'm live on that webinar. I register for webinars, uh -huh. and uh, my calendar reminds me 30 minutes early. Now what happens is the title of the webinar is very different than what they put on the web page because mm -hmm. it's not scented, right? It's like, hey, my name is Jim Smith and I'm going to teach you blah, blah, blah. But then the name of the thing is overcoming, uh, overcoming advertising breakthrough. And I'm like, and I get these things and I'm like, webinar, I don't even remember registering for this. Yeah. And that's a bad problem. Number one, that guy didn't do it proper indoctrination or, um, as you say, branding or mm -hmm. positioning. positioning. Um, and... They're, they didn't do proper scenting. So you're saying to avoid what's happening to me is to make sure that if he would have communicated with me the next day, the oh, next yes. day with more media pieces and gotten me to know him better and then said, look out for the reminder. It's going to say yeah, this, yeah. right? All these things. And when it comes in, I'm going to be like, hey, guys, I just realized I can't go to lunch. Um, I wanted to see this thing, right? You, you want people to stop what they're doing yes. to get on 
And by doing these things, that's where you're having more success with it. Yes, yeah, and you can create an open loop and um, position yourself in advance as the expert, and you know you're going to learn X, Y, Z on the webinar. What do you mean by an open loop? Well, you in your email you you know scratch the fur a surface on a topic that you're going to cover on the webinar that's going to help them to achieve X, Y, Z. But to learn that, you know, they have to be on the live so call. So it's a cliffhanger. Exactly. Like so, a cliffhanger. so a loop always has to come full circle. Exactly. So you give them, you give them one thing so that you don't. You know, tease without any fulfillment. Yep. So here's a great tip. The next tip I'm going to teach you on the webinar is going to show you this. So we're going to go over that in about five minutes in the webinar. You got to be there and now. So, so you you you're giving them basically it's it's a carrot. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, absolutely. And then they get excited. And um, on the live call, back to the formula. It's really the introduction, the story. Some people they go a little bit overbroad with the story on the webinar, so you don't want to go too long. Right. You don't want to like. 20 minutes or something like that. You know, keep it short yeah. and sweet. Um, and then basically, what I do is I kind of set the stage, what to expect in the next 90 minutes. Um, I usually don't do more than three content pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay, like one, two, three, really yeah. good stuff, good content that they really, you know, like move the free line, mm -hmm. like Evan talked about. You know, just over deliver with the content. And then slowly but surely, you transition over into the offer. And you know, I recommend to um, everyone watching this right here. I usually create the offer first, mm -hmm. and then after I created the offer, then I create the other slides. Well, the, yeah, the the offer also helps you create the exactly. slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's a. Uh, I've always felt more comfortable doing that too. Yeah. Uh, it's just I'm I'm very close to the offer, you know, and um, and obviously you know the 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 training it's it's got to be all one bridge. In fact, um, everything. Every, Sassy, I'll look over here at this camera, so I'm still half looking at uh, at Mario while we do this. Guys, we got to remember that when we're doing a, a webinar campaign, that we have to we have to look at it the same way that we do an email campaign. And what I mean by that is everything is is a soft bridge over to the next segment. So if my offer is great and my video sales that are outside of a webinar is great, right? And my email copy is great, but my subject line sucks. Well, then they're not going to open the email, and then everything else falls into the abyss. It's just, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. They will never see the email. They'll never click the link. They'll never hit a landing page. They'll never opt in. They'll never wait three yeah. days. And so, so we, we've got to, we've got to understand every one of these things, all the way down to the subject line, is going to be important. So, we don't want to get focused on just what is our registration page converting at. That's important. But we have to make sure that once they register, we have the, the, the proper sequence mm -hmm. to get them excited to get on the webinar. Now that they're on the webinar, we got to make sure that we we keep them engaged, engaged mm -hmm. to see the offer. And once they start seeing the offer, they don't bounce as soon as they see the price and all these, these different things. We have to make sure that we get them all the way to the end because until we have a chance to present our full and best case, Your Honor, Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, other than that, they're hearing the prosecution's opening argument and they're going to say guilty or not guilty based on that. And we right. have to look at it the same way. We have to treat our marketing like it's a court case. And we've got to get all the facts in. Now, in a courtroom, I can sequester the jury and I can say you have no choice but to listen to this. Yeah. In marketing, we don't. And we know that our marketing messages are only as good as our weakest link. So as you said, if your story should be six minutes, but we, we're so high on ourselves mm -hmm. that we want to talk about the fact that we scored a 300 when we were 16 years old in bowling, and it doesn't have to do with anything, but we yeah. always wanted to tell it, and we're not getting to the point quick enough, well, what's going to happen is they're going to drop out. And everything else that was good before and everything else that's good after it, it all ends right there because of that weak link. So it happens all the time when I talk with Sean yeah. and Lucius. They give me stuff, and I'm like, how's that converting? They're like, actually, Mike, the shorter video is converting better. And I'm like, what? And it kills me. because I'm, I, I, But I, I can't fall in love with myself or my message or anything. I've got to fall in love with the numbers. The reason why this is red on this web page, Sassy, if we go to it here, the reason why this page behind me is red is because it outconverts dark blue, royal blue, sun rays. See the sun rays here in the blue? I wanted sun mm -hmm. rays. I wanted everything. Everything to get rid of this hideous red page behind me. And nothing can beat the red page with the oh no they didn't headline. That's our current control. And Sean, who's over there, you, you know, Sean, how many, how many times do I 
have I asked you to find a control that beats this ugly page? And we can't. We simply can't find something that beats it. So that we can't fall in love with our own yeah. marketing. We have to let the numbers speak for themselves. And if you're, like you said, if you're going to go on with a 20-minute story about yourself and it can be said in six or it can be said in three, then get that done because we only have so much time for the webinar to get Absolutely. everything else in there. Absolutely. Um, you know, one tip that I want to share um, that I usually talk with my students about is one thing that you can um, do to engage people to stick till the end is even in your emails or at the beginning of the webinar, you give them, um, you entice them to stay till the end. And it doesn't have to be, some people go crazy and they promise like an iPad giveaway at the end or it could be a mind map, it could be an action guide, something like that. But in your email, if you promise that at the end of the webinar, they're going to get something, you will have a higher chance that people stick around till the end. Because if you make an offer, you yeah. know, you want people to stick till the end, and right? And you could use that free gift right from the registration. Yep. Right yeah. from the registration. So join me Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, and we're going to be giving you a free mind map of everything that we do in our webinars that convert. And then after the opt-in, say remember to be there Friday, and on the webinar we're giving it to you live. When they get on live, you tell them that they're going yeah. to get it at the end. Now here's what I do. Here's what I do. At the end of a webinar, at the beginning of the webinar, I promise something that everybody gets. Mm -hmm. And here's why. Um, I feel that you always want to leave people happy. And if you're getting people on for an iPad, they're going to be so focused on this iPad mm -hmm. that, number one, only one person's going to get it. They think you're full of shit that, that, that you made it up and gave it to your friend. And they're like, ah, that's crazy. I just wasted an hour of my time. You don't want that guy on for the iPad. You want to give them a good mind map or a process map related to the topic, mm -hmm. which means they're raising their hand saying, I believe in the topic, so I'm interested in the bonus. And then you give it to everybody, and here's where I give it to them. On the very, very last slide, and I'll say, so you can get access today at this price. These are the bonuses. Let me give you the recap. And I, we did promise the bonus, and I'm going to tell you exactly where to get that, blah, 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 blah. So click the link, and you go to the order page. And at the very, very last thing, Obviously, I'm going to go into the FAQs, maybe stay on for a half hour. I don't want to torture them at that point. Right. I, I put it in the terms of service links at the bottom of my order page. Yeah. So I have privacy, I like that. terms of service, and then you know affiliate disclaimer, and then right at the, at the end, it says bonus. So I say, so now go to the order page, and if you want to get access to the bonus, mm -hmm. click the bonus link down in the footer by the terms of service link. So now I'm forcing them to even go to the order page that has the order recap, without having to have them say, go check your email or go yeah. to bonus, bonusreportgiveaway.com. I don't want them to go anywhere getting distracted, waiting for a confirmation email. I send them to the order page, and I have it open in a new window. I love that. Yeah, so. I love that. That reminds me of something that our buddy Ty Cohen called, uh, told me, where sometimes at the end of the webinar, he doesn't reveal the price, and he just gives the URL, and then people want to know how much is it, oh, and yeah, they have to go. It's another great technique. To the yeah. order form. Um, one cool giveaway that works really well for me is um, actually the slides. Mm -hmm. A lot of people on my webinars, they want the slides. They come in late, um, and you went too fast, and they're yeah. taking notes, and that is a brilliant thing to give away, the actual yes, slides. at that the end, yeah. Number one, you're... Uh, you're Depending on the resolution of their of their computer, because uh, Google is gonna, you mm -hmm. know, if they have a slow resolution, Google's gonna break that down a yep. little from HD down to maybe you know 480 or something, and then they're gonna lose some of the resolution. Um, and the slides are not always as big as they'd like them to be, mm -hmm. uh, so they'd love to have a copy of the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, these are some of the strategies for engagement. Obviously, you want to ask, um, or I at least ask a lot of questions on on a on webinars or hangouts with Webinar Jam, and just keep them engaged, you know? I, and you want to ask a lot of yes questions, where you ask something and people say yes. It starts at the beginning if you just ask people, hey, can you hear me loud and clear? Put yes in the chat box. And you start that engagement where people start typing. Mm -hmm. And while you go through, you, you know, does it make sense? Any question? And you know, you get more and more of these micro-commitments, and at the end, you can make an Absolutely, yeah, yeah. How, how, many, how many people have tried Facebook ads and, uh, and and that's going to help you. If you're doing something on Facebook ads yep. and you see 3%, then you're like, okay, I need to slow down the jargon here to make sure because I can't just use normal terms like retargeting. I can't assume yep. that they know what a custom audience is. But if you say, if you get 78%, that's going to make you go, wow, so 78% of you have tried it. Let me do another survey. Mm -hmm. How many of you are currently doing Facebook ads? 6%. Ah, okay, so now and that tells you Wow, almost 70% yeah. of the people have tried it but failed. 
So maybe they know some of the jargon, but we have to talk about exactly. You know, so it, it helps you know where you're going to focus on your slides and drill down the pain points and where you can move uh, along a little bit. Yes, I love that. Uh, and it, it's great dur during the webinar and also after they registered, you could send them to a quick survey mm -hmm. and just find out more about your market and then you can you know, customize your presentation according yeah. to beginners. It's exactly. So, so Mario's saying do a, uh, a presentation uh, as soon as they register, uh, a, a survey. So they register and then right after that say, this is the topic we're going to be covering. What's the single biggest thing exactly. you'd, like to, you'd like to learn? Or what's exactly. the single biggest problem you've had when doing Facebook ads, right? I only have a budget of 100 a month, yep. right? Yeah, right? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you design your presentation. Put two or three slides in, and then you could start the presentation by saying, here's what you guys wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. The survey, here are the results. Well, guess what? We're going to answer all four of those questions, right? Exactly. And then everybody's going to be happy. It's yeah. all about engagement. It's exactly. All about engagement. So these are a couple of the strategies that I use. Um, you know, when it comes to the offer, there's so much that you can do with fast action bonuses and, um, you know, that's basically like marketing 101. But I think at the end of the day, it's congruency, really bonding with the audience. And, you know, the biggest tip, the, 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 you know, the, the secret to my success in the last five years was really um, imperfect action. I say it all the time, yeah. take massive imperfect action because a lot of people, massive, my students, imperfect massive action. imperfect action. Because yeah. you can't wait to be perfect because you exactly. never will. You know, everyone is like, oh, you know what, I'm going to do that um, jam session later. I'm going to publish the book later when it's ready, when it's perfect. It's never ready. It's never ready, you know. So put it out there, get results, and then, you know, with the feedback from the market, you adapt. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are not yet, they don't have the confidence to do their first jam session, mm -hmm. you know, to use the software. They, they, they're, like, kind of shy to, to be in front of the camera. But you know what? If you want to achieve your dreams, you have to take imperfect action and put yourself out there and go for it, you know? If you follow anybody on YouTube, so I'll look here in the camera, guys. If you follow anybody on YouTube, here's what I want you to do. If, uh, what is it, Maria Forleo or mm -hmm. Fiorella? Uh, the uh, recent launch? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, or if it's a guy like um, Equals 3, the guy, uh, I forget, the guy that does all the viral videos, he's the number one guy on YouTube, if you look at their most popular. Uh -huh. He's got the wall with all the pictures, and he's like, our next video is a guy. Okay. He's like, so he's, uh, he's, got some, uh, he's got over uh, 6 billion views to his videos. So what I want you to do is sort by videos, then do the sort by, instead of newest to oldest, oldest, and then see what these people look like mm -hmm. when they first did their first show. You would say to yourself, they would never be able to build a brand if that's how they started. The audio is oh, bad. The man. camera lighting is bad. They 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 didn't even do edits. They they're in a webcam, and you're seeing. Okay, all right, this should be on. Uh, hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing videos, and now you're seeing them like with a studio. It's like so they they followed your advice. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, they just get it going because the only thing that's going to happen between the first webinar and the second, or the first action and the second, yep. is learning is what you've learned, the mistakes that you shouldn't make from the first. Like, wow, I forgot to plug the audio in. And I thought they were getting it from here, but they were getting it from my laptop. Yeah. Like, little things, you'll only get better. Exactly. And um, it's the same with, with Webinar Jam. You know, I just encourage everyone who's um, deciding right now to pick it up to really go in there and do the first session. You know, even if you just invite a couple of friends. You don't have to right away, you know, do Facebook ads and all that stuff. But invite a couple of friends and just get, get used to being in front of a camera. And you know, if you <laughs> the other day I went through my YouTube channel because sometimes you got you know there's sometimes videos out there where you think like man is this video still out there yeah, maybe right. I, and if you have that feeling you know you want to like maybe make it private so I searched through my channel and there's some videos from four years ago where I'm so shy like I'm sitting there shoulders like this you know and I, I look up and I it's like totally shy now I'm presenting you know on stage in front of hundreds of people but it took a little bit of time absolutely so you know and when I like, I come from Germany, so when I started with marketing, there was, like, my accent, and I was all conscious about it. So, but you still have to do it. So there's no excuse, you know. This if I no could excuse. do it, there's yeah. no excuse. There's no excuse. There's no um, excuse. If uh, Jimmy Fallon, he's the uh, host of The Tonight Show. I mean, uh -huh. like, what an honor that is. I mean, there's only been four or five, you know, hosts before him, right, if you include Conan, right? And uh, this guy... When he, when he was on Saturday Night Live, when mm -hmm. he first came out, he was on the Jay Leno show. So they went back 20 years, mm -hmm. and they showed when he came out on the Jay Leno show. If you would have shown that video to anyone and said, this person one day is going to replace Jay Leno for The Tonight Show, a thousand out of a thousand people would have said, there's no way 
that that nervous idiot kid yeah. could, could host. He actually came on. He was he, he looked like Adam Sandler doing. It. He was like, hey, hey Jay, nice to be here. And I, and like and like they, I saw this on the Jay Leno show with him. And like he was like, oh my goodness, I totally <laughs> forgot that. So even even this kid had to go out there in front of an, an audience to follow his passion to one day be able to host it tonight. Yeah. Show. So there's there's no excuses anymore. Yeah, and, and you have to, you know, video is so popular right now. People love it. It's so engaging. You have to jump on doing, you know, um, Google Hangouts, using Webinar Jam, and just put yourself out there. You know, it's right now, in my opinion at least, when it comes to marketing and building an audience that follows you, it's all about being authentic mm -hmm. and saying actually what you feel. So I remember, you know, one day when I was on stage or in front of a video, if you feel nervous, just say it. Yeah. If it's your first, you know, jam session with Webinar Jam and you're nervous, just say it. Yeah. And say, you know what, guys, I'm a little bit nervous. And r just like that, you're more vulnerable and people relate to you. Yes, yeah. And they, nowadays people want to relate, you know, and it's And they like, want to be able to type in the chat, don't be nervous, you look good. Exactly. Right? You know, and uh, they feel like they're bonding with you by supporting you. Exactly. Yeah, don't worry, you look good, you look fine. We can't hate, wait to hear what you say. Yeah, yeah. What's your last product? Yeah. And by you sharing that, but then still taking a step and, and still doing a presentation, they actually respect you even more. Yeah. And, you know, they just relate with that. So I think moving forward with, with videos and everything, it's all about being authentic mm -hmm. and really sharing what you think. And then you do some, you know, um, you have at least basic marketing skills that you, you know, everyone learns with you guys, and you know, that's it's the sky's the limit. That's a, that's the world we're in today. Uh, yeah, being uh, being transparent and uh, authentic. And look, who see it? Hey, oh yeah. <laughs> my yeah, goodness! I'm, a, I'm allowed to come back on. Come on in. Funny. Should I come back in? Yeah, we were oh. going to wrap up. I didn't think. Oh, you were <laughs> what was it? It's Sanford and Son. What yeah, do you we used got to third, say? We got a third chair. Baby. Hey, brother, how you doing, Good man? Good to see you. How you doing? Good to see you. We got, we got another chair. I know we do. It's like I'm the talk show. We're just going to slide me down over here. Let's slide it down right over here. Oh, oh. oh yeah, look at that. Gentlemen. Show the wide shot. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? We've got old my phone. cousin. Old man Jenkins is what they're calling me now. <laughs> Andy yep. Jenkins here. My ticker is bad. Hi, everybody. We got two and a half hours into... Our presentation. I started with AJ. Start with went, AJ Roberts. Yes, went to far the, more attractive than the, I. The the uh, the always exciting, always incredible Frank Kern. How was that guy? Frank uh, Frank did good. I actually did the the twenty minute nervous ran out of stuff to talk about. Thanks for coming. And he was like, I'm not leaving. I drove all the way here. We're going to talk. We'll talk about something. We're going to talk about. We we kept we kept him on for another hour after that. And Frank thank goodness, Frank wouldn't Look at what the, the world has come to. I have a little mitocardial infarction, and Frank Kern is promoting products again. Brandy Sweezy. I, I saw Brandy. Brandy when I walked in. Mario. I know this guy. You, you look picture. fantastic. Thank you. So this is your Bye first guys. time on camera since, wow. since so, the thing. Since the thing. So um, just, uh, you know, blessings to you all. So this is what happened. Uh, on Valentine's Day... I had a heart attack. And so guys, if you're yeah, wondering why so it's been me for the for the last two weeks, five hangouts, <laughs> all the JV videos, everything, the man has just gotten cleared to get back to work. He's going to tell right. you why. I'm so happy to have him back. I'm pretty happy too, man. I got to tell you, it's it's really good to be back. So just like you know, not to ruin the great content that you guys were given, so I'll be fairly quickly. When I was 14 years old, I caught something called Kawasaki's disease, which is very rare. And Kawasaki's disease is best described as like chicken pox, but on the inside of your body. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it attacks basically your arteries, and it causes premature hardening of your arteries. And so what happens is as your arteries harden, they can propel less blood through them because mm -hmm. they're not elastic and spongy. So mine not only uh, got hard, they shrank. So I got to a point where, and, and you guys will know this, I've lost a bunch of weight and I've turned over a health kick and, you know, I'm eating the vegan thing. And I just got to a point where I could tell that was something was wrong with my body. And so I went to my doctors and I said, I just, I'm not feeling right. I'm feeling tired all the time. He goes, let's get you a stress, a stress test. So I went and I did a stress test, and it didn't turn out good. And they're like, well, then let's do some exploratory looking around with x-rays and, you know, CT scans. And they're like, you've got 
hardened arteries. And I'm like, well, what can we do? And he's like, well, we're going we're gonna to operate. Is that cool? Wow. I'm like, yeah. So I went in voluntarily, proactively. I was scheduled on Wednesday the 17th, or Monday the 17th, to have my first procedure. On Valentine's Day, Friday the 14th, I actually had a, um, what is called a mild heart, heart attack. So, um, a mild heart attack. Yeah, and so this is, you know, they, they, they actually say it was a little bit more than mild, but I walked it off. Um, I was just like, no, go to hell. I'm not having a heart attack. I took some aspirin. I was like, got to launch. <laughs> walked around a little bit. You know, Sarah's like, are you kidding me? Go, not dialing my new I'm like, no, no, no. So I had uh, Dave drive me to the hospital. I walked in uh, to the emergency room. I'm like, listen, I had this thing. It felt like, you know, somebody was squeezing my chest a little bit. I figured I'd come in because I'm supposed to have surgery on Monday. And so they checked me in and, you know, said, hey, you'd had a heart attack. I'm like, well, that's cool. You know, it's Friday. Can we still do the surgery on Monday? They're like, yep. So they ended up doing two surgeries with robots, which is the coolest freaking thing. They went in through my veins. You can still kind of see where this arm is a little black and blue. They went in through here, and they went in through my femoral arteries. And they essentially reconstructed with robots. I mean, literally, the doctor had the goggles. Years ago, they would have they would have sliced open, me open, ripped you open, ripped like my this, cage you open, a bypass. and given me a bypass. That, that's what you needed. That's right. That's right. Wow. And so Luckily what they did today, today is he was like, <laughs> player one well, ready. Xbox controller. <laughs> and like literally, he's like, how you doing? I was awake for the whole thing. How you doing, Andy? And I, I look got, over, and he's got it. Looks like the you know the I Oculus did, Rift VR didn't have goggles. John Reese doing because he would have been like, uh, <laughs> I'm getting lost. I'm <laughs> right. down. It was, seriously, it was not unlike John when he was wearing the goggles when he was flying like the, the drone for Yeah. So you know, three hour surgery put me on happy juice. They had little like a little sky cloud thing going. And this was happy juice. Like I can see how people get addicted to drugs. Mm. Some serious <laughs> topics of stuff here, folks. Now, so um. That was my, my first surgery was Monday. My last one was Wednesday. Um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And here I am. How are you so, and had the I'm feeling good. Yeah, I had to go back to the doctor's today. Put in. Yeah, I had basically <laughs> platinum stents put in to rebuild the arteries around it. And then they're giving me my, they're harvesting my own, it's cutting edge stuff, my own stem cells to rebuild the tissue around the stents. Hmm. I know. Amazing. Na, 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 na. We should. Can. Do we have the Bionic Man music? Um, I can probably get it. But so that was two weeks ago. I just went to see the doctor today, and they're going to take me off half my medicine because I'm recovering super well, and I'm ready to get back to work. Let me tell you something. People die from heart attacks not because of the heart attack, because of the boredom after that. I was literally – they I, – I, Took all my stuff off, you know, pulled out my things, mm -hmm. left the hospital because I just couldn't take it. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Sarah was I texting see. me. He's getting cranky. Yeah. <laughs> would you call him up? And, yeah. Would you yeah. give him his ass to work? Please take him out of Reich and only give him good news. Yes. You know, that's yes. our, our, our so, software. Well, and good I news, you, man. You got caught up on, like, every HBO movie that ever existed. Man, so I discovered a couple. Like, House of Cards was, like, two days. Done. <laughs> Uh, you know, Sherlock done, yeah. caught up. Vikings discovered Vikings. I, gotta, I didn't even know about that. Everybody's talking about it. Vikings, fantastic. Uh, Home and Garden Television. Oh my goodness, the Two Brothers show. No, you guys know what I'm talking about? Wow. Right? You, you went off the beaten path, sir. Dude, I was on HSN buying shit. I'm telling you, you it was ridiculous. Bravo? I watched. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> television, television for women. Yeah. I, I got familiar with Housewives, Real Housewives of Atlanta, because mm -hmm. that's my favorite. I'd be like literally, you know, FaceTiming with my mom. She'd be like, "Oh, this woman's a bitch." <laughs> <I'd> be, <laughs> you know, I bought cable. I actually got cable. Yeah, I haven't had cable in my house. Years. Yeah, in like five years, and I actually got cable because um, you for had one week because I couldn't do a thing. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Hmm. But here I am. Um, cool. I feel Glad great. To back. So it's not well, just so back, super yeah. awesome. It's not yeah. going to be just me anymore. We're no, back. We're back. Back in, in action here. Black. Literally. So, so was that cool? I'm sorry, you guys, if I like spent too much. Time. Oh no, Andy. Let me sorry, give you. Let me give you good news. So uh, let's see. To, uh, as we speak, we. Hey, congratulations. Thank by you. The way, for Thank that you. Thing that I know about. I don't know if we're talking. No, about no. It's yeah. We, we talked about. We talked yeah, about yeah. it. We are at seven hundred and thirty-eight. Thousand dollars in just one day. Sales today, when we started the thing, should have a heart attack. We were at um, old man Jenkins. We were at five hundred and eighty thousand when we started with uh, with Frank Kern. 
So it is on fire, I think. Yeah, is the that's actually term. that's um, wow. well, that's the beginning of a new tool. That's the beginning of a. I think that means people a, are identifying with what we're saying. Uh, and what a we're a tool that people are going to use. You know, it was. Um, I was thinking about what I was going to talk about besides my health. Um, and I was thinking about what is what, you know what, what can you do with a webinar you know what's the whole purpose why why did we go out of our way to build software right because you know software is not the easiest thing in the world to build to make money online all right let's just be clear it's a good Mike, way it's a good way to piss people off like, yeah with bugs right. and not being able to support it Mike and I could do a lot of different things to to earn a living mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than make software and support software and then go out at this low price point which means Everybody is going to take mm -hmm. a crack at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the reason why we did it is because I think more than anything, people ask me, you know, Andy, you hit this glass ceiling, right? And this glass ceiling usually happens for a lot of people we know between three hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand dollars a year. They get to that point and they're like, man, no matter how hard I try, and I've tried launches and all that other stuff, and I'm like, they ask, what what can I do to get to that like magical million or People want to know what they can do in a marketplace that is oversaturated. And I'm like, it, it comes down to something that Mike and I did the other day. All right. So we'll tell you a quick story. It was about Frank Kern. So Frank calls and he goes, we're saying, Frank, you know, man, you're, you're a big webinar proponent. You should really get behind Webinar Jam. And he goes, we'll discuss it on the links. Mm -hmm. So he basically challenges Mike and I to a round of golf, uh -huh. right? And... I go to Mike, I'm like, you want to do it? He's like, in the middle of a launch? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. So I haven't been cleared by the doctors yet. I don't care. I'm going to go out. I feel great. And we go to Sports Authority, and we're like, wow, we got to buy the whole enchilada, clubs and shoes, shoes shirts, and that, everything. Right? And a shirt here. So Mike and I are, are looking around, and we come up to the gloves, and there's a wall of gloves, of golf gloves. And we're like, what? go over here. We went over to the brand that we knew, which was Nike. Nike. And we're right talking middle, about it. We're right literally talking about it. And, and we're like, this is a brand right here, man. I, don't, I was looking at all these other ones. There were cheaper ones and cooler ones. And I'm like, this is Nike. They had I bullet know points of all this get different something. technology and lace technology. But, but there was Nike. It had the mm -hmm. swoosh. Yeah, and it had, a, it had a bigger, it had more offerings. It was center line position right at the eye. That's and, a brand. And we, we just felt so comfortable going, yeah, I'll just take the Nike. We didn't talk about it. We didn't look at like whether it was cavity back clubs or graphite shafts. Or we're just like, boom. Doesn't matter. Doesn't it's matter. It's a brand. And that's what webinars and are all about. I think webinars are the most powerful way that a normal human being can create a brand. Because especially with go to web or not go to webinar especially with a Google Hangout versus GoToWebinar. Google Hangout lets you talk. You know, you can mm. see us. You can hear us. You can interact. You yeah. can bring people in. Where mm. when you have GoToWebinar, it's usually there's slides or there's some screen caps or stuff. It's just not an easy way to communicate who you it's are. It's a different world. You want it? people That's to say. Just, we were just yeah. ending with it's about authenticity and transparency. That's where it's going. Yeah. That's what Brandy was talking about. You want people to be able to say right away, it's like you and I have our vision for our company, which is, you know, we want our customers to say, huh, I need something on Facebook traffic. I wonder if Mike and Andy have anything. We want that to be the question first. You know what I mean? Because that's the brand. That's what they've come to you to know and love is Mike and Andy give good content. Well, they, it's because they know us. And we spend time doing this, being on camera. You know, it's where we like to be. They understand yeah. the transparency. They understand what we're talking about. And it's just really easy to give content on a webinar. You know, it you is. know, other than a live event, which limits you to you know a few hundred people or a thousand people, if you have a home run, and that costs hundreds of oh, thousands yeah. of dollars. Versus this, I mean, you know, your biggest expense is. What? Nothing. I mean, it's two two ninety seven. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking to build that a brand. I think I think a brand is your ten x. Yeah. Put your ten x in. You're gonna always hit a ceiling until people know what you're all about. And I think they get to know you when it comes. That happened to, to me in my business. Um, just right. You were just that warrior forum dude. Exactly. Right? So I was just about to share that I would just go from launch to launch, like you know, ten, seventeen dollar products, and I got stuck at this one income level, and I couldn't break through, and then. I started introducing webinars and just like, yeah, it's such a difference because now you can offer something for like four ninety seven, nine ninety seven, 
Frank, you know, ten thousand dollar offers. Well, I was just going to say that we used to say when Frank Frank got out of the launch game for a little while because he experimented with some other businesses and did some offline stuff, and he really got smart as a result of it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that he was able to do is remain relevant in the marketplace, right? Why? Because he was given almost nothing but webinars, mm -hmm. exclusively webinars. The only way to get with Frank, and Frank is a major brand is to go on a Frank Kern webinar. That's the only way you could buy anything from yeah. yeah. And so I, I think, you know, if you just take a look at the people in our marketplace, they've embraced this mm -hmm. thing. Because, look, man, you know, it's funny. What do we say, like, uh, a typical funnel, you know, that you're driving traffic to, if you're closing 2 or 3%, you're killing it, mm -hmm. right? And then what are you doing on a launch? You're closing 5%, you're killing it. Mm -hmm. And then we ask ourselves, well, what are we doing on a webinar? Mm -hmm. And it's always... 10 to 15 percent close rate. You know what I mean? We measure EPCs or earnings per click in really successful launches in like tens and twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, when somebody shows up to a webinar, like what would we call it, earnings per attendee, yeah. EPAs, it's like two hundred dollars. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just the most valuable media that you can create. We're doing it for webinar gym. We're yeah. eating our own dog food. We've done five of them since we we did the launch uh, ten days ago. Five of them. Yeah, and just and part of it is to prove how freaking easy it is yeah. to do. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's all content. Yeah. And then we stop for a little commercial. Hey, you want to buy it? There's you know eight eight hours uh, left. You know for the special. But uh, it, it's a formula. Uh, get out there. Be transparent. Get get in front of the, the the little webcams and and give content. Give people what they want, and they'll be happy to be your customers. I mean, I, I mean we've done the thing where we've had the. The $90 Logitech C920, like right here. Now, look, you don't need a giant boss vision here. You don't need the touch screen like we've got going on here. Now, Andy this likes can be toys. A I like Andy toys. Likes right? toys. This could be with, with cameras attached to a $150 whiteboard or nothing. Yep. You know what I mean? And you should see this. It's so funny. We spent about 10 grand on this whole package. Just so you guys know, this is what it means to be a partner of Andy Jenkins. Because Mike, I said, Mike, we need this. We have to level up. And so we do this. Now all of a sudden, they like these things come out, and now they're like three grand. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but anyway, this is really cool, right? It takes it up a little. You get to show off with a webinar. Yeah. In my opinion. And the beautiful thing is, if you combine the old school launch model where you have video one, two, three, four. And then you, like you guys do a mic, um, Kimix does it too, and then you still do webinar jam sessions, and you do like, you know, three, four after. Exactly. During and, see, those, and then you combine it, and you just have the best of both worlds. There used to, to today. There, there used to be a time when you do a product launch. Let's talk about product launches for a second. It, where you would do your four launch product launch, right? So you'd have the first video, which was the opportunity. The second video, yeah. which was, you, you know, the uh, information and skill. The, the third video, Social which proof. is... Yeah, exactly. And then the fourth video was the sales video. And that would be it. And that's when you would have the million dollar days because the first day was always the biggest day in a launch. Yeah. Oh now... We did 25,000. Our first, our first day. day. We've done... 25,000 in the last 40 minutes. I mean, that, <laughs> in the, you know, right. 10 days later. Yeah, yeah. That's, Frank and I were talking about that's that. Shocking. It, it that's used shocking. incredible. To, it, it used to be this vertical. It's now, that vertical line has now been stretched out like a radio wave. It goes like this. Like this it's a hockey stick. Yeah, and then, yeah, exactly. Right? So, how does that happen? So, what used to happen is people would do their launch. They'd have their launch video, mm -hmm. and then that would be it. They used, then they would do something called the Walker W, right? Yeah. So from product launches. So in the middle of your launch, that's when you would an announce the payment plan. It's the Walker hockey stick. Right, right. Yeah. And then at the end is when you'd have your urgency because it was closed. Right. It doesn't happen no, like that rule, anymore. Rules are you have to be in the marketplace making videos, launch videos, after the cart opens. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... Pivoting. Pivoting, and, and what we've discovered is it's actually a lot better and it's more pleasing to the audience and you can give more value and information to the marketplace if you're live. If you're live. We did it with Video Genesis. It had never been done before. We did eight jam sessions yes. for video. Before they were called jam yes. sessions. Live, every live. night. Answering Q&A. Doing yeah. what we're doing now. Th right. Doing what we're doing now. And we're this doing is not it. about, I'm not trying to brag or anything. It's just hopefully you guys are getting ideas about, you know, hey, I'm about what, to do a promotion or a campaign. Get or ready to do these live every That's night. Right. That's right. I think, I think you could just do... We did some presentations and some training during Video Genesis, but I think you could just literally do Q&A, quality Q&A. Here's some FAQs, some frequently asked questions about my product, and I'm opening it up to questions. Who's got some questions? And you do that every single day 
during your cart open, right, of your campaign, and then of course you mail it to people mm -hmm. because you know the the hangout technology records it. Now you're mailing videos. Now you're like you're doing the thing that I believe in, which is video is the most powerful medium. Now it's live video, which is even more powerful, and now it's brand building, and you're doing it every day far easier than yeah. we were able to do it just a couple years ago. Absolutely. Just a year ago. Yeah. Just a year ago. I mean, it wasn't this good. Google Hangout technology wasn't this good when we launched video. No, it didn't do HD. Right. And the reason why <coughs> Webinar Jam came out is because of our jam sessions. There wasn't a technology out there to help us create a front end to get people on the webinar. We were making mock pages. Didn't, didn't have an automated way to remind them to get on. We were mailing people. And we, and we were on the webinar going, did we mail the people to get on, but there's nobody on? Oh, we forgot to mail. So we had to go and create you a know, solution. So here's so, so something that's kind of interesting. Is, um, <clears throat> what do you need? Right? This is, well, if we're talking about product launches, we're talking about selling, which we are. Um, here's a couple things. Here's a couple of tips for you guys. One of the things that your customer wants to know is, what do they need to make this solution work? Right? They want to know, OK, if I buy your thing, Am I also going to need the batteries? And I'm gonna, am I going to need the tripod? Am I going to? What other things am I going to need? And the fact is, Webinar Jam sends emails, and it captures leads, and it makes pages that play video, and it does replays, and it does add to cart buttons, surveys and polls, and it does surveys and polls. And what do you? What else do you need? If you have a PayPal account. Do you have everything that you need in order to make money with a webinar? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and more coming. And how many pieces of software can say that? That's all you need is a way to get the money. GTM. Why we, get the money. Why are we charging so little? Why are we dumb for life? Really, really dumb. And we're for never, you. Yeah, well, that price is changing. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You know what? So here's, here's why we're doing it. Because this is the great playing field leveling technology. And Somebody else is going to sell our marketplace the tools. Mm -hmm. I want them to buy from us, mm -hmm. and I want to be transparent about it. And you see, the thing that's different between about Mike and I, I think, not to exclude you, you're very beautiful, um, is, you. that, is that we don't have to hit a home run every time we engage our customer, meaning from a financial standpoint. We want them to hit a home run. But for us, we know that we could make twice as much money if they buy from us twice mm -hmm. because they liked us a lot the a second brand. time. It's mm -hmm. called a brand. Yeah. And we get it mostly from doing jam sessions. That's it. That's it. I mean, so what do you think? Like, this, how's the ticker? My ticker. I love My it. My ticker, okay? How is it to be back? So good. Yeah, right? It's so good, man. It really is just, uh, you know, what they say, if you've got your health, you've got everything. It is true. Um, any 40-year-old men out there want to encourage you to go get a stress test and check things out? I was lucky. I could have, I could have had all this happen to me in the course of an hour because I was having a massive heart attack. But you know, I knew what to do. I had some drugs that they had given me previously. You know, I was able to walk myself and into the hospital and check myself in. And two weeks later, I mean, no, it's two months before a typical heart attack bypass patient. And here I am two weeks later, and uh, I feel pretty good. I'm awesome. not huffing and puffing. I worked out today. Shit, damn, buy my shit. All right. We're going to close on that <laughs> note. So, so here's, here it is. We started at 3. It's 5.48 going to 6 o'clock. Three hours you guys joined us yeah. for this incredible jam session with, with um, A.J. Roberts, Mario Brown, Brandy Sweezy, and Frank Kern, mm. and the surprise guest that we weren't sure if he could make it, old cousin Andy Jenkins. So, old man Jenkins! Guys, go to webinarjam.com. You see the countdown timer behind us. There is eight hours left to buy this thing for 297 bucks. Once. And never pay again. You're going to pay more later from us, or you're going to pay go to webinar later more. That's a fact. Those you're are facts. Go to webinar more than Every that month. in two weeks. Yes. They're $6,000 a year, yep. and at that price, it still made you money. Yep. It made people thousands of dollars. You don't have to waste that money anymore. Get started with us. Come join us. Uh, you got all the features. Everything you need to know about Webinar Jam is and right some there. Some integrations are coming, right? Integrations with some other some other tool makers. 
That's right. Yeah, have called we, us and yeah. said, "Hey, we would like talking to integrate." Talking to Lee Pages, talking to the megaphone. Megaphone. Guys. My my buddies Travis and Kenny over there at that uh, Carver. Carver. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. We're gonna. In fact, we're gonna show you how this software works. Dave is gonna put in a redirect URL to webinarjam.com. Oh, and, and he's and we got set. a little the the demo. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah. And when you get there, check it out. Watch the three videos on the website. And become a customer, guys. We're going to be talking to our guys, Ted and John, about doing a live training every single day for the next two weeks on how to actually do Google Hangouts because it's important that they know how to do Hangouts so that they know how to do proper jam sessions. Well, wait a minute. So it's going to take 10 minutes to do that. What are we going to do for the other nine sessions? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we got a lot of customers today. We, we did. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, so that's they true. might not. Well, make, well, we'll need. They to might not make. And, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. They'll do it live, and they can. Uh, yes. The first 10 minutes will be high-end content, and yeah, then okay, you'll know people, everything They've got their questions about the cameras and, and microphones. Oh, and man, you know what? I would just like to hang out with the customers. Yeah, to be how to get a producer, honest. all yeah. that stuff. Right. So, yeah, so Ted, Ted and John uh, from uh, Jam Sessions Made Easy uh, are going to be doing that for us. What for a cool free. brand. Yeah. Jam, so you guys like the idea of a jam session instead of a webinar? Hell, yeah. I like that, man. Absolutely. That was, cool. was that was that AJ or was that somebody that was, else here? That was AJ in an email. AJ in an yeah. email. Yeah, that's right. All right, Dave. Cool. Send Dave. them on over to. Now, does that happen after the delay or live? You might want to wait sixty seconds. <laughs> All right. Either we're just going to cut us previous selves off, yeah. or we'll fi we'll figure Straight it out. I'm going to let my hair down. Take it easy, everybody. Bye, Take it everybody. Easy. Bye, bye. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -da.